who has been a stellar effort to give these young men the opportunity to play in the 2019. One, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Football Canada. To the top high school and major players at 18 level. 400 now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the team Manitoba. And now, their opponent for today's game, Team British Columbia.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the broadcast of this game between Team Manitoba and Team BC. This is the MU18 Challenge of Canada, and this will be the game will split the fifth and the sixth team of the tournament. I will be assisted uh, with my analyst, Nassim Wadzi. How are you doing today, Nassim? I'm doing excellent. I just called back an amazing game for the seventh against uh, seventh for the battle for the seventh place. It was opposing Nova Scotia uh, against uh, New Brunswick. Uh, it, it was a closely defended uh, game. It, it ended out uh, a win for uh, Manitoba, 15 to 14. Uh, not for Manitoba, for New Brunswick, 15 to 14. Yeah. Uh, initially, uh, they were losing the during the whole game. Uh, but at the end of the game, uh, their backup quarterback came in the game and made an incredible drive to score and lead his team to victory. So let's hope for, uh, for a good show here. Um, so the first game was between two teams of the married teams. Now we're going to the far west of Canada with Team Manitoba and Team BC. And you're right. And kick, the kicker for uh, Manitoba right now is Reese White. Uh, amazingly, uh, he wasn't the one kicking uh, balls for uh, Nova Sco uh, for Manitoba. Uh, usually, it's Dylan Day number ten. Uh, but right now, we have a first time for uh, Rice Week. So this is the second of our four broadcasts of the day. Later on, we're gonna have Ontario versus Alberta and Saskatchewan against Quebec for the gold medal. So the initial kickoff is picked up at their own twenty-yard line for Team BC. A nice return for the for the returner, and after a few missed tackles, he is brought down at the line of 37 of their own territory. Yes, maybe it's not a spectacular return, but right now the ball is placed at the 37-yard line, which is uh, quite a good field position to start off the game. Uh, if uh, you might take a time to watch at the BC offense, uh, there's that number 55 of the O-line, uh, the young... Uh, Jackson McEwen, who was dominating uh, the whole tournament, uh, he, he stand at six foot five, two, 285 pounds. Uh, he's out of Mount Douglas Secondary in Victoria. Uh, he's a player to watch in this contest. There's going to be a passing play, and the ball is incomplete. That was the quarterback, a new quarterback, Jay Mather. They've been alternating between Jay Mather and Keyshawn Dorsey for the whole tournament. Yes, uh, these two have been uh, exchanging drive uh, one from one another. Uh, right now, a first pass that is incomplete to the running back, Noah Anderson, who's been quite impactful in the game. Uh, we know the, la uh, the British Columbia is not uh, a strong passing team. They're more of a running team. Uh, right now, they start off with a bad pass, and it's second and ten. Yeah, I think it's the first time they start a drive with um, shotgun formation. So let's see what they do here. It's going to be another pass. And this time, it is nearly intercepted by number two, Isaac Dokin. Yes, Isaac Dokin is one of the best uh, players uh, on the defensive side of Manitoba's football team. He has a total of 18 tackles and uh, he's been outstanding uh, being uh, all over every player on coverage. Uh, right now you see a great example of it almost coming up with an, inter in, with an interception. So uh, bold strategy here for coach uh, Corey Philpott who was a running back in the CFL. He's won the Grey Cup with the um, BC Lions in 1994. Uh, he's a run for his guy, but he, I think he decided to go with six receivers here. The punt is very high and very deep. What a nice punt. And it will be recovered at the 25-yard line. And <laughs> who else than Reese Weig uh, on the return? But he stumbled and was hit after a gain of only about a yard. Yes, what a good punt uh, by the, the their young punter. Uh, I've, uh, his name is uh, is leaking it. Then his name is uh, uh, Corbin Grant. Uh, he's been outstanding all tournament long. Right now, uh, making Reese White has the uh, backup, and he he stumbles on his feet. And unfortunately for him, uh, the cover team is on his neck uh, with four defenders ready to tackle him. And the quarterback once again for Team Manitoba is Sawyer Thiessen. And the player to watch, the running back number 21, Ishan Shumatunga, who had four touchdowns in his last game. Let's see if he can build on that great performance. Right now, it's a pass off a of play action. And what a nice pass. And I think it is caught by number 84, Jaden Martins. Hey, that was a very good play action there. I was sure they were going to hand the ball to Ishinisu Matanga, but Saritisen with a dart to his receiver. Yes, uh, the receiver number 84, Jaden Martins, using his length to come across in the interior of the DB and make sure he comes up with the ball uh, going, in the, uh, going to the ground. What an excellent catch made by the receiver. So this will be a first down for 
14, Manitoba in BC territory. Another play action and a quick pass to the receiver who juggled with the ball but still made the catch and will be pushed out of bounds on the line of the scrimmage. But there is a penalty marker late after the play. And unfortunately for them, the D line 99, Cody McMahon, uh, with a late hit uh, after the, the, the receiver went out of bounds. Uh, this is unfortunately an unsportsmanlike conduct, and it's the 15 yard penalty. So, uh, a very unfortunate start for that BC uh, defensive unit. Yeah, and a very late hit from the defensive lineman, Cody McMahon. Uh, unfortunate here, and discipline has been a key word here for the whole tournament for all the teams that were involved. Yes, you're damn right. And uh, what I'm surprised is that we haven't seen a, quite a lot of Ishi and Shumatunga. I know it's early in the drive, but usually they're a uh, run-first offense. Uh, expect number 21 to be very effective in the run game. Let's see if they use him on this play. Still five receivers and a light formation. It's going to be another pass for Sawyer Eason, who looks to his left. And the pass is intercepted! So the ball tip of the hands of the receiver and the DB and it was intercepted as Sawyer Thiessen was hit very hard in the backfield. Yes, good heads up play. I think the DB number one, Ryan Burfello, comes up with the interception. No, actually, it's number 11, Corbin Grant, the kicker as well. What an excellent job. And, I, and as he returned the football, he stiff arms number 19, uh, Luke Cameron Brandstorm, the receiver uh, out of St. Paul's. Uh, what a great play by uh, this young man being patient, seeing the ball being tipped off and coming up with a big interception and return. So a very unusual first drive for Team Manitoba who didn't run the ball, only passing plays in this first drive. Finally paid off for BC who will take possession now and still at the quarterback position, Jay Mather. In the backfield, it's Noah Anderson. And they're going to go with the run and Anderson. After a short gain, he's going to be tackled around the 28-yard line of their own territory. Yes, and the run is their bread and butter. Uh, you know this uh, British Columbia unit is not used to pass the football. Uh, they keep on switching uh, from Jay Mather to Keyshawn Dorsey. Keyshawn Dorsey is the uh, quarterback actually that had the most rep in this tournament. Uh, he had uh, 19 attempts uh, compared to 8 from Jay Mather. Right now, they want to see more of Jay Mather, and that's what they're uh, doing right now. And I think giving him the shotgun position is an advantage uh, from a passing perspective, which he will do on second down. No, he will keep the ball very comfortable there. And he is tackled after a gain of about a yard. So not a lot of fluidity in Jay Matter's run here. Yes, I know it's not a lot of fluidity, but uh, I, I respect his decision of running with the football. He sees that uh, his receivers are covered. He's not forcing any interception early in the game, uh, taking uh, his leg to his neck and try to run the football. Uh, right now, it's not a quite an impressive run, but it will pay off doing smart decision like this in the long term. So this will be third down and five yards to go, and it looks like they are going to punt the ball. And once again, they have a gunner behind the kicker. Uh, who is standing on the top of your screen at the 19-yard line. Yes, and we know that punter isn't really effective uh, with his punting. Uh, right now, he's averaging only 33.4 uh, uh, yards per punt. And you were right. That was a very bad punt from the kicker here. And uh, Team Manitoba will uh, take possession at the 50-yard line inside the BC territory. So... A juicy position for Team Manitoba on their second drive. And I'm sure, I'm sure here, if you are the coach of Manitoba, uh, Ryan Carruth, you want to score points. Yes, that's for sure. And you have to uh, set up the run with Ishiyanshu Matunga. Uh, after that, we know that he's effective. So they will start loading up the box and giving more uh, space to your receiver. Right now, I'm not even seeing Ishian Shumatunga. Maybe they don't want to showcase him uh, early in this tournament, uh, in this game, I mean. But uh, we, there's no, no sight of Ishian Shumatunga. So a first down and a run down the middle. There are two penalty markers on the play. I suspect that number one, um, Theo Carajalios, was offside on this play. Yes, and uh, unfortunately for Theo Carajalios, uh, who's been quite an important player for uh, this defense. Uh, he's uh, everywhere at, on the football field right now, maybe not making the, the best play available, but still he's been uh, having a quite an outstanding tournament so far. And ladies and gentlemen, and especially Carajalios, would you please beg my pardon? The penalty will be against Team uh, BC. So they will move the ball at the... Uh, 44-yard line of the BC territory, and I think it will be still first down for them. 
Yeah, so that means it's probably an offside play from, from that defense. Uh, so that gives up first and five. Still in shotgun formation. Go with, guess what? Another pass. Short pass that is completed and a first down and even more. He's running on the sideline and will be pushed out of bounds at the 27 yard line. But again, another very late penalty marker on the play. And look at this play uh, develop. Uh, we cannot see it, but on the near side, there's a, a, a crossing motion from the wide receiver. So 19 is actually starting from the near side, ending up at the far side of the field, uh, making a good catch and run. And unfortunately for him, there's a late hit. But uh, for, uh, I mean, fortunately for him, there's a late hit and he will gain 15 more yards. Yeah, that was number 19, Luke Cameron Branstrom. And if I'm not doing any mistake, that was his first reception in the tournament. Uh, yes, that might you might be right. We haven't seen a lot of action from Luke Cameron Branstrom, but right now he's illustrating himself uh, early in this football game. So a very good position on the field. They will be on Team BC, the 13-yard line with a first down. And they still go with the running back Tanner Frobisher, uh, where who's not used to play. We know Ishian Trumetenga has been has seen most of the reps right now it's a quarterback run from number 12 and good run by Sawyer Thiessen who we already know uh, has a quite a good ability to run with the football and that was a good play here uh, um, well executed the fake uh, jet sweep and the number 68 on the block nice nice block from Sam Samuel Olaniran and the run from Sawyer Thiessen so this will be second down and four yards to go do you expect a run here um, I'm I'm not sure about that. If it was Ishien Shumatanga, I would go for a run. But I'm more confident of going with the pass, especially in the red zone, because you have plenty of field to work with, uh, including the touchdown area. So second down and a passing play here. It is completed, and it is good for a touchdown. That was a pass to Theo Carajalios. Nice pass from Sawyer Deason. Good job by Theo Carajalios. Uh, making sure he's getting open on that crosser route. He's been an outstanding receiver. He's the leading receiver uh, of Manitoba's offense with 107 yards in the competition, uh, only in a game that he started. He hasn't played both games. He only started one of them. And right now he's having uh, a good uh, beginning of a game uh, with a touchdown early in this, in this game. So a seven yard reception for Manitoba who scored the first points of the game. And now there is the extra point attempt. Let's see if it works for them. But what I like in this drive was the diversity. Uh, of course, they only made the passing plays and one run from Sawyer Thiessen. But I'm sure um, when Team BC was preparing for this game, they were looking at number 21, Ishinisu Matanga, and they brought something else totally. Yes, but that, that, just, exp uh, that just showcased the, uh, uh, the versatility of this offense. They're not relying on a single player. I think that's the, what they want to show us. But you know they have the secret weapon, that secret sauce that they can sprinkle at the end uh, of this game. You know this guy still has fresh legs, hasn't run a, 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 a snap. Uh, in this uh, early in this game, uh, you know he'll be ready when he ever, whenever he gets the football. So with 6:31 remaining in the first quarter, the score 7-0 for Manitoba over BC at the Richard Richardson Stadium at the University of Queens in Kingston. It is a beautiful day for football. Uh, there are four games today. Uh, the first one was a win from New Brunswick, 15 to 14 over Nova Scotia. And Nassim. This is a game for the fifth place. Um, how did both of these teams arrive here to, at this point of the tournament? Well, if we, well, let's start with BC. They started out the contest uh, with a loss against Ontario, 16-14. Uh, uh, unfortunately, they started off uh, with a 16-0 and 0, uh, deficit. Uh, and then they came back late in the second quarter, but it was unfortunately not enough to come back. And then they, they, they won the last game against Nova Scotia, 38-17. And the kick returner will smartly fall on the ball instead of risking the biscuit here. And then, and now let's not forget about Manitoba, how they came here. Uh, they started off the tournament with a loss uh, against Quebec, uh, 31 to seven. Uh, Quebec, who is now playing in the finals, let's not forget, uh, this will be the highlight game uh, of today's uh, contest. It will be aired at 6 p.m. And also after that loss, they went on to win against uh, New Brunswick, 36 to, seven, uh, to 16. Thank you very much, Nassim, for this report. So it will be first down for Team BC at their own 26-yard line. The pass is dropped by the intended receiver, 
I think that was number 10, Caden Danbrook. Yes, Caden Danbrook, uh, uh, a good receiver for their offense. He hasn't been the most productive uh, wide receiver, but he still has a total of 18 yards in this tournament. Uh, he's a good target. But that's a must catch here. Yes, that's for sure. But unfortunately, in this tournament, you cannot always get all the catch that you want. You got to be prepared for these drops. Uh, it sure uh, sets your team uh, in a bad position. But right now, they're facing second and ten. Let's see if they can bounce back from that drop. There are four receivers on the large side of the field. Under the snapper here, it will be a pass from Jay Matter. It is completed to the receiver, but nowhere to go. There are three players from Manitoba to stop. I think it was number three, or no? No, no it's not number three. It's it's a uh, number eight, uh, Noah Anderson, the running back uh, in the backfield. Am I right? No, it's number two, Terrell Jones, the wide receiver out of Lord Tweets Moore Secondary uh, in Langley City. Uh, good job from his part, catching the football. Unfortunately for him, uh, the the defensive uh, unit from Manitoba. Had a good rally on the football and there's no gain on the play. Yeah, Terrell Jones and Noah Anderson both go at the same school uh, at Lord Tweetsmeyer uh, Secondary in BC. So uh, the confusion comes from there. And a punt. Very, same. very high. Oh, a nice play by number 14. Who escapes a few tackles and is going to try to get the outside. What a nice return from him. That was number 14. Richard Lugumeyer, who is also a quarterback for Team Manitoba. Yes, he's a quarterback from Sisler High School in Winnipeg. Good job from him making the first guy miss. We know he's an elusive quarterback. Uh, if we see him back in the football game, expect him to be able to run the football. And that's what you're asking from a quarterback in 2019. He has to be able to run with his feet. He needs to, uh, to, to be able to make passes. So um, that was a nice play from him. So... Manitoba's offense is back on the field with who else than number 21, Ishinisu Matanga, in the backfield. We have five receivers, three on the white side. Will be a passing play for them. Sartison, a long pass attempted, and it's just too long for the intended receiver. That was number 11, uh, Reese White. Yes, unfortunately for Reese White, he was wide open, but a little out of touch with the quarterback who overthrew that ball. But good wheel route run by him. That leaves him wide open uh, in the deep area. Good job from his part. So still yet to have a run from Team Manitoba, except the one from Sartison on the fake uh, jet sweep. They will now align six receivers, four on the wide side. So <laughs> expect the passing play here. Second down and ten. Short pass to Matanga, who gets the ball was trying to find space but it's tackle after a gain of seven yards way short of the first down here i like how they use ishin shumatunga right now they're showing off a wide receiver formation with him and they use him in a wide receiver screen if he doesn't dance too much and it, and uses his strength to uh, make them the first defender miss maybe we have a big gain on this one but right now unfortunately we fell short so it's a third and second and they might have to punt yeah, Ishinisu Matanga, he's 5 foot 10, but 220 pounds, so what a piece of human being. He comes from Vincent Massey uh, High School in Winnipeg, so uh, it will be interesting to follow this kid. Yes, and why we hype him up so much is because in the previous performance, he had four touchdowns, three by the run and one by the pass. What an outstanding performance. It's rare that you see a four uh, TD performance from a player, and he's accomplished that in a, such a high-level tournament. A short punt from uh, the number 19, the punter. And there is a flag on the play. I think they, they, they didn't give number the nine. five yards here. Yes, and, and the return by Caden Denbrook, the wide receiver. He's doing everything on that football field. Kicking the football at times, returning the footballs at other times, and being a wide receiver uh, for their offense. Right now, uh, he's doing good. Unfortunately, there was no yard allowed for him to return, and they will get a penalty for that. Yeah, that was Ethan Nagler with the punt. We, we named this guy uh, so many times during the first uh, two games. Uh, is that, I'm not sure if that's good or bad news for, uh, for them, but certainly good news for him. He's been a very good kicker for them. Yes, and I want to make a highlight on that third, number 37, the safety, uh, who only has nine tackles, but also has a sack and two interceptions uh, in this tournament right now. He also has a pass defended, so uh, he's an excellent player for them. Watch that number 37. And the deep ball 
Woo. is completed to the receiver. What a nice play. That was a maybe a 40-yard pass, and that was completed to number 17, Nolan Um. Nolan Um, what a good heads up play. The, pa the pass was perfectly thrown uh, by the young man. Uh, Keish, uh, Jay Mather, I mean, sorry for that mistake. Or is it Keyshawn Dorsey that just came in the game? I'm oh, not sure. It's, a, it's still Jay Mather, it is. but excellent uh, uh, connection with his wide receiver. And all the credit to the defensive back, Owen Mailer, who was on a tight coverage, but just a perfect pass from uh, Jay Mather. And now they're coming back uh, with their uh, single back formation under the snappers. So let's see what they do here on a first down. The toss to Noah Anderson, who's going to try to take the outside. And it works for him. He's going to run all the way up to the 20-yard line and is pushed out of bounds after a nice hit from number two. Isaac Dokin. Well, good job from that offensive two, unit. Right now, they're driving that defense Andrew way Andrew back in their territory. Andrew but right now, we're entering the red zone, and we know we've seen a lot of teams struggle to find that finishing touch uh, in the red zone. Right now, we want to expect something spectacular, uh, maybe out of the playbook, maybe something uh, that's uh, not seen by those defense uh, you defensive unit because right now it's crucial time and with three minutes in the first quarter i know we're early in the game but do you go on a three down uh, mentality or on a two downs and a field goal maybe for them let's see what happens six receivers and the bubble to noah anderson who catches the ball and runs it oh and there was a fumble there but it's recovered by him. Uh, to answer your question, I think it's too early in the game. You want to play it safe. You know if you accumulate those field goals, it can pay off in the long run. Uh, we've seen a lot of teams that went too aggressive early in the game and then regretted it in the long run. Uh, right now, I expect them to, to go for a field goal if they don't complete that second down. But uh, right now, we're focusing on that second down, hoping that they can get a first down on that. So after the fumble, it will be second down and 10 remaining, 14 BC. They are at the 19-yard line in Manitoba's territory. Let's see if they can capitalize here. And once again, they come back with the shotgun formation. A motion, fake jet sweep, and a pass, which is incomplete to the intended receiver. That was number two, Terrell Jones. Well, and excellent number job by number 25, Aiden, Aiden Fass, the DB, the uh, making a heads-up play on that coverage. coverage. Good job from Third his down. side. Uh, just to give you a little heads up, uh, he's been an outstanding DB for them. Uh, Adam Fast, who has a total of nine tackle in this tournament, maybe has not seen a lot of stats like interception or pass defended, but he's such a good corner, and that's what you expect from a corner. Not a lot of tackles, having silent games, because you know that when you're tackled and you're not targeted, it's because you're covering your guys in the right way. So a very good analysis here. Thank you, Nassim. And the, uh, it will be a... 31-yard attempt for number And the field goal attempt is good between the and uprights. The and that was the number uh, 52. Would you please beg my pardon? Liam Reed, uh, defensive lineman, standing at 6 foot 2 from Vernon Secondary. Yes, and Liam Reed, uh, who's been quite good doing those field goals. Uh, right now, he had, he had two field goal attempts, but only made one of them. Uh, but the other uh, field goal that he tried was a very long attempt. Unfortunately, he hit the post. Uh, previously in this tournament but right now he's a uh, two for three with this one uh, having four of four in a uh, extra point made so in one minute and 40 seconds remaining in this first quarter the score manitoba seven bc three so a very good game of football to begin with and uh let's see if manitoba can diversify their offense here if they can run the ball and uh still be able to pass it but at least gain gain momentum right now there's they're alternating between tanner frobisher and Ishan Shumatunga, good job of that uh, offensive coordinator exploring every facet of his playbook. And it will, and it will be a run from Tanner Frobisher, the and ball Tanner carrier here. Frobisher he gains um, yards seven on yards on the play. play. Yes, Same and down. look at that good work by the O-line. Uh, they create a big gap in the middle, uh, splitting the tackle and washing him away from the play, making sure he has a big alley to run that football. And good heads-up tackle by number 27. Uh, coming up on the second level, Mr. Phoenix Moeller. Nice name, Mr. Phoenix Moeller. <laughs> Let's see if it can be as good as his name is. So a second down and another run with Frobisher, who will gain a first down and even more. He will be tackled at the 49-yard line, but a nice gain again and from Tanner Frobisher. And again, that O-line that makes him untouched in the backfield. Look at the job of number 68, Samuel Olerian, washing away the free defender, making sure he's untouched before uh, at least getting five yards. 
and right now we're facing a, uh, a first down and 10. Good job by this whole line. But isn't it weird for an offensive lineman to move on the backfield? No, it's not weird. It's actually a good uh, strategy. It's called a trap or a pull, and it usually opens up uh, the play for the run, and it's, it kind of confuses defensive fronts. So now I pass, and it is dropped by Frobisher. But yeah, to come back on the on the running plays, uh, I was joking, of course, but uh, uh, it is important to move all lines, and it's important for them to be fluid if you want to have success on your running plays. Yes, on the polar trap techniques, what you're usually doing is you're letting a p defender come out free, so he thinks he's going to make a play, and then you have uh, all linemen pulling or trapping like you've seen number 68 do on the play, uh, just to cut him off in the backside and... Uh, uh, cutting him half guard and uh, block, adding an extra blocker uh, where the run is going, actually. So second down and 10 for Team Manitoba. Another passing play, no surprise here. A lot of pressure and he won't be able to escape the pressure. What a nice play by the defensive line of Team BC. Yes, good job by that uh, red helmet. I can't see his number from here. But it, it, they came up again with that drag route that, that has been so successful. But you know it's a yeah, long exactly. developing play. And Kayshawn number 54, Kayshawn Carter, Carter comes up with the sack. Good the patience from his part. He was also assisted mm -hmm. by another defensive player. I still can't see his number. But good job from that whole defensive front applying a lot of pressure on the quarterback. I don't know his number, but I saw that he's got a, a sleeve with Supreme on. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he's got this swag going on. Uh, that's for sure. As, as I was talking with uh, Jonathan Urban earlier, uh, you know you know what they say. Look good, play good. So uh, that's a heads up for him. Let's hope so, because otherwise it would look ridiculous. So this will be third down and forever for Team Manitoba, who will have to punt here. Um... And already a, a third or fourth punt for them, or maybe second, because they scored a touchdown. Beg my pardon, please. A heavy formation, and the punt is super high. It is catched at the 40-yard line. Hugh Jukes had a nice play on the tackle here. That was the kick returner, number 10, Kaden Danbrook. And I think we have a, uh, an injured player, Ethan Nagler, who used to punt and kick uh, field goals for that team. Now it's Reese White coming in in the game. Uh, he previous, previously in that tournament, uh, he only had made f uh, field placement uh, kick. Uh, he has been the the punt returner. He only made one extra point, uh, three for three, an extra point. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. And he uh, missed his only field goal that he tried. But right now, we're not seeing Ethan Nagler on the field, so uh, might have a little concern from concern for his health. And if you're just joining, the score is 7-3 for Manitoba. 11:30 in the second quarter here. On the first down, a bubble pass is completed to the receiver who will run with the ball with a nice lane. And it will be tackled down inside Manitoba's territory, to be exact, at the 47-yard line, or 46, should I say. That was number 17, Nolan Ohm. Good catch and run by Nolan Ohm. He's, the, the play is executed perfectly. Look at the block the receivers are setting. It gives him a wide open alley, uh, making sure he's untouched at least until he reaches 10 yards. And then he gains a few yards after contact, making sure uh, he is having an excellent uh, gain on the play. It's always good for the confidence of a quarterback to complete even the shortest pass. So uh, let's hope Jay Mather can build on this pass. It will be first down for Team BC. So go with the run and Anderson. A nice play, nice reaction by both the defensive tackles here. That was number 99, Ethan Papino and Jonah Siciliano. Yes, those 2D tackle clogging up the middle, making sure there's no room for that running back to escape. As we see, they're moving the line of scrimmage, turning them hips, and making a great tackle on that play. That was textbook for both of them. So uh, it will be second down and eight yards to go for Team BC. They're a nice first play where they were able to gain about 25 yards. Let's see what they do here on second down. There are only six men in the box for Team Manitoba. It will be a passing play. Looking for a receiver, and he's going to run with the ball. So Jay Matter, the ball carrier, who tried to slide down, but was uh, heavily tackled down at the 35-yard line. But I think this will be enough to move the chains once again for Team BC. 
And Jay Angle, their linebacker, is a tackling machine. He has a total of 19 tackles in this tournament. Uh, he's been everywhere on the football field right now. He's their top leading tackler uh, for their defense. I uh, appreciate his night of work, but good reaction by uh, uh, Sawyer Thiessen. No, Jay Mather, I'm sorry. Uh, Jay Mather for running that football after all the receivers were covered. Yeah, Isaac Dokken, as you said, it is a tackling machine. Uh, he's able to find uh, his way to make tackles uh, on every single play. He will blitz here. What a nice blitz from him. And he heavily hits Matter as the pass is incomplete. But what a penetration from number two, Isaac Dokken, who made Jay Matter pay here. Yes, the pressure has been the, the play on this draw. Uh, on the, has been the, the play of this play. <laughs> Let's put it like that. Uh, right now, they have two guys penetrating the backfield. Him assisted by number 10, Nathan Small, with, with the uh, halfback blitz on this play. Excellent job by this defensive coordinator play calling, uh, leaving two guys free on the blitz. So this will be second down and 10 yards. Let's see if they can capitalize. They are at the Manitoba's 35-yard line. Four receivers on the strong side for Team BC. A tossing play to Noah Anderson will run with the ball and he will be tackled after a gain of about five yards but what a bizarre play call here and maybe we don't see it as clear as it is but right now the play is made by number 56 maybe he's not on the tackle but he's forcing the play on the interior where all your support is look at him coming on the outside forcing the play on the inside and then giving easy tackle uh a gang tackle by number two and number 99 we're talking about isaac Dokin and ethan papino here so on a third down and five, it looks like they're going to go for it. So a bold move by the head coach, Corey Philpott, who's also their offensive coordinator. It will be a pass, and it is completed. So it is a first down and even more for the uh, for Team and BC and the receiver. That was number, number 17, 17 Nolan, uh, Nolan Ulm. And again, Jay, Jaden Angle with another tackle, but good heads-up play. We go with the all-hook on third down. When you go in all hook in Canadian football, you have five receivers. At least one of the receivers will get open. So you're sure of hitting the target. It's just a matter of finding who's open right now. The QB is doing an excellent job of finding that play. Uh, I don't like the, the number 17 coming back because he might have lost that first down. But good job in the end coming up with the first. So a new set of downs for Team BC. We'll run the ball here with Anderson. What a nice move from him. And a gain of about six or seven yards, I would say. Yes, it's a good uh, run to start off uh, this uh, this uh, three down uh, possession. Right now, uh, he's setting up his team for second and four, uh, which opens up the playbook quite a lot. You can still run the football for a first down, but you can pass the football as well, and you can go deep and surprise that offense. That that uh, that defense. I'm sorry, the defense has no uh, clue on what you can do because you can. Op uh, you have the playbook is wide open. Yeah, and Noah Anderson won the MVP for, uh, for Team BC on their second game. So a second down and five, and the pass with the pressure is incomplete. That lacked accuracy, but a very nice play there from the pass rusher. That was number five, Jaden Angle. Yeah, Jaden Angle, who's everyone on that football field. But hey, good good uh, job of Jay Mather to give a chance to Noah Anderson to at least catch that football. I know the ball is overthrown, but at least he gives him an opportunity to make the play. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little too uh, far away, but it could have uh, been a big game. Uh, but good job of Jaden Angle on that pressure. So, after all, Liam Reed is going to attempt a 26-yard field goal here. Uh, he made his first one from uh, 27. Let's see if he can score the, uh, some more points for Team BC. Yeah, Liam Reed, who has been uh, one for two in this tournament, and oh, right now he hit the upright. Yes, he missed the upright. Uh, he missed the upright. Uh, I'm sorry. He was one for two prior to that game, and right now he's one for two in that game. So uh, quite a rough start for him. It's 50%, which is not great as a kicker. Uh, especially, it wasn't a great distance. But uh, uh, it will still be seven to three uh, for Manitoba. You have to be disappointed uh, to not come up with points on that drive. And that was possibly the um, the worst case scenario here because uh, if he missed his field goal. But a returner couldn't get it out of the end zone. That would have been a rouge. At least get a single point of it. But uh, yes, unfortunately, they come up empty-handed. So to begin this drive, we have number 21, Ishinisu Matanga, in the backfield. They will start a drive at their 20-yard line. 
And Matanga is running with the ball and will gain about six here. And this is where you see a great... This is the difference between a great and a, a, an excellent running back. Here uh, you see it could have been a loss of a down, but look at this little fake over here, making sure uh, he helps his blocker to get an extra edge on the block and he can get an extra five yards after that, that uh, play. Good job from Ishan Shumatanga uh, on that play. So what do you say are the biggest assets of uh, Ishan Sumatanga uh, coming into this game? He's an, all, he, he's an overall uh, excellent back. He's, he's a powerful back. He can lower the shoulder. He can juke players. Uh, he has it all. He can catch the football as well. Uh, I'm sorry. He can pass protect. We've seen everything out of him. And what a nice play by the number 11. That was Reese White once again. What a nice play from him. It looks like he didn't want to get tackled on that play. Yes, Reese Quaik is, is an all-around player. He's been punting the football, kicking the football, uh, f uh, making field goals for that team. Uh, he's been returning as well, and right now he's making excellent plays as a wide receiver. Uh, we like complete athletes, and right now Reese Quaik is a difference maker in this game. So another set of downs for Manitoba who will now stand at their own 35. But a, a nice catch and run by Reese Quaik to get that first down. This will be another passing play. Sartison looks to his right. And this will, a, this will be a screen play. So a design play to Ishatsu Matanga, who will gain about 20 yards on the play. So an, another first down for Team Manitoba. So you just asked me what made him a, such a great running back. He's able to catch the football and he's able to read his block as well to make him progress through that field, gaining that exterior, making sure he's in the inside of his blocker. And right now he's, gaining, he's having an extra yardage uh, on this run. Good job from him. Uh, I expect to see more uh, from Ishien Shu if they want to uh, perform in this tournament. So yeah, he's able to run with the ball as a hard-nosed running back, but he's also uh, very fluid and elusive. So first down inside BC's territory now for Manitoba, who are literally marching down the field. The pass is completed to the intended receiver, who uh, attempted a stiff arm, but will still gain about six and yards here. I think Manitoba's offensive coordinator has seen a lack of coverage in the, the flat zone and the hook, or, uh, or as we call it, the curl as well. Uh, these are the short zone. Uh, we keep seeing th these drag routes by the receivers. So basically, they start off with a wide receiver and they make him cross the whole field just to dump it to him and make him gain the extra yardage. Right now, it's been paying off a lot for them. Uh, they have success with that play. So second down and four yards to go for Team Manitoba. Sartison fakes the handoff and the pass is incomplete. It was way too high for the intended receiver. Yes, a little juggle. Ooh, and there's a pushing after the, f the play. We see number one, yeah, Tio Carajalio is going Sorry. to the ground. Maybe he's been pushed off. I didn't see what uh, was going on. But on this play, there's a bad uh, play action uh, handoff. And the, the quarterbacks juggle with the football. Unfortunately, it's too late. So uh, uh, when he throws the football, it's incomplete. But right now, they're going yeah. for it on third down. Excellent uh, aggressiveness by this uh, the offensive coordinator. Let's see what they come up with. Yeah, so they're going for it on third down. This will be a passing play. Eason looks to his right. And it is completed to the intended receiver, number one, Tiro Cabrajalios. And again, we have a first down for Team Manitoba. What a good decision here. And again, they're exploring these out routes, these drag routes. They want to exploit uh, the receiver going on the exterior. I think they're seeing something uh, out of this defense. They're maybe letting uh, them uh, uh, pl play this, the flat too much. Maybe we'll see this defense adjust. And maybe jump for a pick six on this on these plays. These are dangerous play to complete. Uh, maybe if the corner sits in his zone, maybe we'll see a pick six on this play. So a first down for Team Manitoba. Fake end off and a rocket screen. And this time it is completed to number 84. But problem is there's only one O-line there. And there are like five players of Team BC. Yes. Good heads up play by the defense, rallying to that football, making sure they're gang tackling him. Only one line can all block that many defender, and ultimately number 13, uh, Vincenzo Narduli, the linebacker, comes up with the tackle. Uh, Narduli has been quite an important part of that defense. Uh, he has one touchdown uh, for an interception. He had an interception for a touchdown in this tournament, so expect more of Vincenzo Narduli in this tournament. Yeah, so the referee uh, blew the three-minute warning. So on second down, six receivers here. 
And the pass is incomplete to number one, Theo Carajalios. He couldn't put both hands on the ball, and what a nice play from the defensive back here. Yes, uh, we see Corbin Brank breaking out the pass uh, on that play. Good job. It was almost completed to Theo. He had it in the beginning, Theo Carajalios. But at the end of the play, we see number 11, the young uh, Corbin Grant with an excellent heads-up play. So here they will not go for it on a third down and nine to go. I think they will have to punt the ball, yes, and it is Ethan Nagler, the punter, who will be back on the field. Yes, it's an excellent opportunity to get a good field position or maybe a rouge on this play. Let's see uh, if he has the leg uh, to make it a good uh, kick. We'll see uh, on that play. The returner is on his own goal line, so let's see. A high floating punt. It is recovered by the returner, and there is a penalty marker on the play. If I'm not doing any mistakes, since that ball didn't bounce off and they didn't give the five yards to the returner, this will be a 15 yard penalty for Team BC. No, unfortunately, the, the ball bounced off, so it will only be a five yard penalty. Uh, but we'll see. Oh no, you're right. It's a 15 yard penalty. So Team BC will have a huge break here instead of being at their own 14-yard line. Or should I say, yeah, he was tackled at the 14-yard line, but a penalty will apply on the 10-yard line, which is the place where it occurred. So 15-yard penalty, they will start this drive at their own 25-yard line. Yes, what a lucky break. Uh, unfortunately, it's not even a lucky break because it's a, a miscommunication from this punt unit. Uh, maybe they expected a longer punt, but it was quite long, so I just would uh, blame it on the coverage team. Uh, they have to do a better job of giving up that five yard. So, 2 11, we know it's plenty of time in Canadian football, and Team BC still has their three timeouts. Fake handoff, and a long pass attempted to the receiver, and it is incomplete. A lack of communication between uh, Jay Mather and the, the number 80, Caleb Schlachter. Yes, maybe. I don't know if the receiver is not aware that the ball should be thrown. Uh, on the far end of the, the sideline. Maybe it was a, a fade route that was uh, maybe a little underthrown uh, on the outside, or maybe it's a corner and the receiver didn't make it uh, flat enough, but we have an incompletion on this one. So this will be second down and 10 for Team BC. They definitely want to score points before the end of this half. Another passing play. A deep pass from Jim Matter, and this time it is intercepted by number 37, but, hold your horses, there is a penalty marker on the play, and it looks like the number 37, the Brandon Slobozian, is injured for Team Manitoba. Yes, and that's Slobosian a big loss. Brandon Slobozian is one of their best defensive players. Uh, he's surely won one MVP. I'm not sure if he got both in this tournament, but right now it seems like a bad injury. Uh, we'll come back with more information when we have time. Right now, he has two interceptions in this tournament. And as we see on the replay, it looks like it's Ooh. maybe his knee, definitely his left leg. So let's see what happens there, but it looks serious. Yes, he, ob he obviously had a bad fell on his single leg. Uh, I think the knee was injured on that play. It doesn't look good. We might have a longer break than expected. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we hope he gets better. Uh, as soon as possible, we hope it's not an ACL uh, injury. Uh, right now, it's not looking good for uh, the young Slobosian. So, if you are joining, uh, joining us right now, it is 7-3 for Manitoba against BC. And they are playing for the fifth place in this tournament. So, both teams lost their first game uh, of the tournament. Uh, Manitoba lost against Team Quebec and BC lost against Team Ontario. And then they both won their second game of the tournament. So, uh, yes, they're playing here for um, the fifth place, but also for a winning record. After being both 1-1, one of these teams is going to end up the tournament at 2-1 and one of them at 1-2. And a uh, good job from Brian Slobosian. He's able to stand up right now. Uh, they're escorting him on the sideline. Uh, just to add to your point, maybe people don't understand why these uh, seventh place game or these fifth place game, the battle for the fifth place or the seventh place, are uh, are important. The reason why they're important is because uh, next year, when the uh, when teams will meet up in the next tournament, uh, let's say the eighth place will go against the first place in this tournament. So well, you to want the tournament, yeah. So you oh. want your, the next generation to have a better uh, competitive advantage 
uh, in the tournament. Wow. So you give them a better opportunity by winning now. Uh, and it's way better to end up uh, in fifth place than in sixth place. Is that what we call playing for the legacy? Yes, that's what we call playing for the legacy. <laughs> so there was a penalty marker against Manitoba on the play for pass interference. So a new set of downs for BC. Uh, on a first down, a toss to Noah Anderson, but a good reaction by the defensive players of Manitoba. And, and a loss of seven yards on the play for Noah Anderson. Yes, good job by number 98. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have his number. I think it's Brendan uh, Linklater uh, who's uh, coming up on the play. Uh, and assisted by Ethan Papineau as well. Good job uh, forcing a tackle for loss, a huge loss on that play. So we don't know you, number 98, but you are a good football player, and we recognize that even though we don't know your name. We're going to have to call him Jasper the Ghost. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think he's from the same school as the guy, number 99, Ethan Pepino from Dakota College. Uh, but I can't see uh, his name on the sheet. Sorry for that. On a second now, it's completed to the intended receiver. Sadly, yeah, he fell down as he completed. received the ball. So 14. a 10-yard game, but uh, even like 12 or 13-yard game. But this will be way short for a Team BC of yeah, a first down. So they will have to punt the ball down, here. Yes, and uh, let's hope we can see uh, more of Slobosian. Maybe we'll take a, a, a little break from that game. But we hope he'll come back because he's such an important part of that defense. He has created uh, two turnovers, maybe another one in here. But uh, unfortunately, there was a penalty on the play. So he didn't get his third interception of the tournament. But uh, right now, we're seeing this punt return unit uh, with the returner number 14. Uh, Richard Lugemeyer, the running back, uh, the QB, I mean. And the punt is linear. Bad bounce here. Bad break for uh, Team BC. And Team Manitoba will recover, and there is a penalty marker on the play. And they didn't allow the five yards to the returner. Yes, it, it seems like they're not even trying to give those five ground. yards. Maybe uh, the coordinator is is uh, is well comfortable with only a five yard gain of the return, so that's why they don't they're not giving it, uh, giving the returner a five yard uh, the the five yard rule. Uh, but uh, right now we're not seeing any of this uh, this being played and. If you're not, if I'm not mistaken, with that bad bounce, it's only like a 20-yard uh, punt, yeah, so that plays them in a good field position. Yeah, yeah, they're already in BC's territory, so a good, good opportunity here for Manitoba to add more points Manitoba. before the half. There is 108 left in the first half, but both teams still have their three timeouts. So let's see what they do here. And the dangerous Ishan Shumatunga is in the backfield. Let's hope they use him more on the play. He's also very good uh, to block the defenders. So a jet screen on the outside from Reese Weick. Oh, and what a nice play by the defensive back the of Reece Team White, BC here to stop the run. Yes, and as we but see, uh, that defense is not letting those BC blockers uh, set up the edge. The uh, even though Ishan Shumatunga does a good job of sealing and... Uh, number 54 might have uh, needed to continue to give an extra door. Number 24 is here for that tackle. Uh, I'm talking here about Kai Thomas, who's been uh, quite a patient DB in this tournament and has been, it has paid off a lot. What a nice play by and both the defensive ends to have a nice QB cycle. Number loss of seven yards on the play. Jackson. That was number 50. No, not 55. It's 54, <laughs> I think. 54, maybe Kayshawn Carter, the defensive end from St. Thomas and More. Me here. Carter, so what a nice play here from here both the defensive the end uh, and the pocket collapses as Sartisan has nowhere to go. And yes, we also have number 85 or 88. That is the D line mate, Mr. Sterling May, that was uh, here to support, uh, who almost created a sandwich uh, with the other player. Uh, let's see, there's a a little whistling on the play. Yeah, Let's see I what think they BC call. asked for a timeout here, so they will discuss their strategy. Either they will want to uh, have a nice return or to block the punt. So let's see what they do here. But w as we see, the situation is there's only 50 seconds on the clock. Uh, Manitoba yeah, still has three timeouts, but right now the ball is going to go into BC's hands, who only has football. two timeouts. They just burn out uh, their first one here. Uh, maybe they'll try a, a big return on this one. Right now I'm seeing uh, the returner number 10, uh, Caden uh, Danbrook, the receiver. And hey, in the first game of this tournament, there was a block punt for uh, Team BC and they returned it for a touchdown. That was Zach Smith. Let's see what they do here. Looks like they're going to go for it. Oh, 
<laughs> and is the, it is still punted by Ethan Angler. There is a penalty marker on the play. And Dan Brill catches it with a lot of speed. Tries to escape the pressure. And will finally be brought down at the 45-yard line. I lost him. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. And there is a penalty marker on the play. I think there was some holding in the backfield from these up backs on the punt formation. Uh, let's see what they do. But... Uh, the number 17 who almost came up with the block was certainly held. I'm talking about the young Nolan Ohm, the receiver who has quite a big game right now. So maybe it was also roughing the kicker. Let's see what they what they say here as we see the replay. No, it was no. definitely holding. Mm -hmm. I think it's on Ishan, Ishan Sumitanga. Sorry, I'm, 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 I keep on massacring that name. <laughs> but uh, Ishan Sumitanga, uh, he's doing an excellent job on this tournament. But right now he might be caught for not uh, holding penalty. And you are right, it is an holding penalty against Ishan Sumatanga, so there will be um, some yards that will be added to uh, this BC return. No, they declined the penalty, so this will be first down at their own 45-yard line. But and you know, the these type of penalties are not necessarily bad penalties, penalties because if if he, does, he doesn't uh, do a holding on that play, uh, maybe number 17 comes up free and blocks the kick. So sometimes it's good to have these penalties, and even mm -hmm. though uh, it was it was declined by British Columbia, so uh, it's a good penalty to take. So a first down with 35 seconds to go for BC. And the pass is completed to the intended receiver, who will be brought down by the number 25, the defensive back, Adam Fast. Yes, and 85 number Brendan Johnson with the reception on this one. Uh, being aware, the defenders are applying a lot of pressure, uh, using his body to protect the football, and then uh, going up uh, with a short gain of three yards. So this will bring second down and seven yards to go after a short reception uh, for the receiver. And uh, we have another timeout by British Columbia, by the way. Yeah. And another timeout here for British Columbia. So that is a good decision here to stop the clock, discuss the strategy. And what do you expect here. from uh, BC's offense? Uh, for sure, I expect when a lot of aggressiveness by the air. Uh, we know they ha they've they been successful at the beginning of this game, uh, throwing the football. Uh, we I could expect a deep ball uh, thrown maybe to uh, uh, the young Theo Karahalios, who's been their star receiver in this contest. Uh, previously to uh, well, well, previous to that game, he has 107 receiving yard, uh, which is quite good for such a turn in, in this type of tournament. But uh, we have to ex expect the ball here. I'm sorry, not Theo Carahalios. <laughs> what a mistake by my. <laughs> I didn't want to throw you under the bus, but you did <laughs> sorry, it yourself. Sorry, it was a Caden uh, Danbrook. I'm so, so sorry. So four for receiver that. on the on the weak side on second down, a pass attempted and it is intercepted. The ball is and intercepted is by number intercepted 56, by Nicolas number Pereira. 56, what a good reaction Nicola here. Pereira. Yes, and Nicola Pereira, what a heads Turn up play uh, in down. this tournament. Man, He's been Manitoba. quite good. He already has an interception for a touchdown uh, for Manitoba in this tournament. And he also has a tackle for loss. Uh, plus seven tackles right now he's making another interception good heads up play so he's a quick linebacker standing at five foot eleven and 195 pounds he goes to saint paul's high school and he's from the city of winnipeg just like like and a lot of, of these players play, a lot of these players coming from saint paul's uh, uh high school i think i can see at least 10 uh in a manitoba jersey mm -hmm. uh, good job for, for from that school to create uh, such good players so a prevent defense for bc who don't want to allow points here and the pass from Thiessen is incomplete. A lack of communication. Uh, the number 84 was the intended receiver in Jaden Martins, but he didn't continue his route. I think he did a curl at about uh, 15, uh, 15 yards. Yes, but it, it's very hard to throw deep, especially in prevent defense where you see we have five DBs lined up mm -hmm. way behind in the deep territory. Uh, if you were a uh, if you're uh, if you're seeing that, you might uh, want to exploit these intermediate uh, routes. But, uh, you know, the clock is ticking down, so you have to, uh, to make a uh, good play. So it will be second down and 10 at their own 53-yard line. They'll go with another pass here, full protection. And it is caught by Reese Wyke, who's got a lot of field to work with. And smartly will go out of bounds after a gain of and 10 yards. So it will be first down for Mike Team with Manitoba with only 9.2 seconds remaining in this first half. 
Well, right now you're facing a dilemma. Would you like to go for a big gain, but not necessarily a Hail Mary and maybe uh, have uh, your team kick a field goal? Or you can uh, play it all for all, all for all and just try Hail Mary, maybe not on that play, because you still have time for two more plays and you have your three timeouts. But uh, it will be interesting to see what the offensive of coordinator elect to, to do. So first down and 10 inside BC's territory. Deason looks to his left and the pressure is brought. A QB sack, another QB sack for BC's defense. BC. Good job by number 54, Kayshawn Carter, uh, being the first again. on the play. Kayshawn Carter with the sack. Good job. Oh, I think Gayshon Carter is telling us it's not him, it's his friend. Uh, what's the number? I see number 99, Cody McMahon on the play. At least he was the one celebrating after that sack. So you I might be right. Was number 99, and what's Cody funny, ladies McMahon and gentlemen, is that the PA announcer the uh, is on our right. So uh, he depends from our calls and we depend from his calls. <laughs> and most of the time, those are mistakes. So, <laughs> so it will be second down and forever for uh, Manitoba at the 55-yard line in the middle of the field. And they'll go with the run with Ishansu Matanga, who will be stopped after a gain of about five yards. And that should do it for the first half, ladies and gentlemen. So a defensive-minded uh, first half, 7-3 for Manitoba over BC. So I think there were a lot of opportunities for both teams to add points on the board, but only seven points for Manitoba and three for BC. Yes, uh, from Manitoba's side, I'm expecting more of that secret sauce. Number 21, who hasn't been quite a lot, uh, who hasn't seen quite a lot of targets uh, or uh, rushes uh, in this game. Uh, every time he touched the football, he's been effective uh, all throughout the tournament. I'm not especially in that game, but uh, whenever he's touched that football. So I'm expecting more of that secret sauce to be sprinkled uh, during, after halftime. But if you showed all your weapons on the first possession, would you call it the secret sauce? Well, but I think he's uh, he's versatile enough to be a secret sauce uh, from the first quarter till this, the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we're talking about uh, uh, British Columbia side, uh, they sure have to recollect and uh, think about their offensive strategy. Uh, right now, they have quite a lot of uh, great weapons. Noah Anderson has been great uh, off the run, but they haven't exploited him a lot. Uh, they tried the passing game uh, quite often. It's not been clicking as they wished it would. Uh, right now, they, they're struggling with penalties as well. Uh, let's hope they bounce back from their, that, that poor offensive performance. Yeah, Manitoba needs that secret sauce, but BC needs that sauce <laughs> on the second half. Let's hope it is uh, the sauce of the delicious poutine uh, brought to you in part by the province of Quebec. <laughs> so, after uh, uh, two quarters of play, it is Manitoba 7 and British Columbia 3. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Go. Go, 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 go. Good job. Good job. Good job. Hey. Nice. Good job. There it is. Go, 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 go. Keep him in. Keep him in. Oh, oh, oh. Try, 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 try. That's the way they celebrate. I can't hear you. What's the difference between a good defense and a great defense? Coach, you're asked to do it all. Huddle is here to help. We have the tools to make every video a learning opportunity. You can add comments and drawings to any play and share those clips with players so they can see what they did well and how to improve. You can also use Huddle to connect with built-in messaging, notify the entire team of last-minute changes, request feedback, or assign tasks. 
Head to the field knowing everyone is on the same page. And for those moments you want to celebrate, Huddle makes it easy to create and share highlights. Build an end of season reel while your players customize game highlights for their personal profiles. Make this the season you coach, connect, and celebrate all with one tool. Sign up for a free trial to see how Huddle can help you this season. What does it take to become elite? It takes more than dedication, focus, and hard work. It takes an elite level training program. Customized, sport specific, online. Your perfect workout every time. That's Vault Athletics.
videos. Looks good. Hooray! No, I, I brought camera three on purpose. Okay. Uh, six. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the broadcast of this game uh, between Manitoba and British Columbia. They're playing for the fifth place here. And uh, right now, we're seeing a quite a contested uh, first half uh, against Manitoba against BC. Manitoba is leading 7-3. to three. Uh, We'll see the highlight replays. Uh, we see an interception right at the beginning, a bad pass from Jay Mather, tipped off by the receiver, and it's number 11, Corbin Grant, the DB, coming up with a big interception. Uh, right now we see a uh, uh, shotgun pass to Tio uh, Carajalios, the wide receiver scoring uh, a touchdown, the only offensive touchdown in this game. We can see his little celebration with his boys. Oh, <laughs> some burpees here. He's the trainer making his teammates do some burpees. And then right now we see British Columbia's quarterback, number seven, uh, Jay Mather, with the deep ball. Uh, good job by the receiver, uh, Nolan Ohm, who's been quite good in this game. Now there's the field goal, the only point scored by British Columbia. It's the young Liam Reed, the defensive lineman, who's also playing as uh, their kicker. And now we saw Sawyer Thiessen in the backfield uh, yeah, throwing a little dish to uh, Reese White, the young wide receiver, making extra effort to gain yardage uh, on this play. And uh, right now we're seeing again uh, uh, Sawyer Thiessen in the shotgun. Huge sack by number 99. Sorry about that. His name is Corey McCahan. Uh, previously we missed him. But his name is Corey McCahan. And right now uh, we have Jay Mather who threw the interception. To number 56, uh, Nicolas Pereira, uh, who almost, uh, who always, uh, who, sorry about that, who already had a touchdown uh, return interception earlier in the tournament. Uh, back to you, Mathieu. Yes, thank you very much for this analysis and the highlight reels who are brought by our fantastic uh, team behind us. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to, uh, to uh, deliver such a quality uh, report without them. So uh, thank you very much uh, for the whole team and uh, from Nassim and I, and of course, John too. So, to uh, kick things off, literally kick things off, Manitoba will uh, um, attempt a kickoff here and a return uh, for Team BC. And we can remember that uh, usually it's Ethan Nagler, the kicker uh, for British Columbia. He's the kicker and the punter, but now he's not playing. We don't know, maybe he's injured. Uh, but it's Reese Wyke, the young wide receiver, uh, doing it all. And a short here. Onside kick. And ooh, oh, it and bounces out of bounds, and I think it will be BC's ball. Wow, uh, I think uh, no Manitoba's player were not aware that if you touch the ball yeah. last, you're the one possessing that football. They could have tipped it out of bounds way earlier than that. And finally, with all that juggling uh, with the football, it's uh, it's a, a number uh, 14. 
uh, Jackson Stebbings, the wide receiver that comes up with the heads up play so and tipped the ball out of bounds. Could you explain to our spectators what's the difference uh, of possession between the American football and Canadian so football? So when you have a free ball, it's called the last touch rule. So the last player to touch the ball, if it goes out of bounds, is the, uh, gets his team to recover the football. So on first down, it's the toss to Noah Anderson, who will gain about four yards here. And there is a new quarterback and for Noah Team BC. Anderson Just like we saw in the first two games, it is Keyshawn Dorsey now playing at the quarterback position. Yes, and Keyshawn Dorsey had way more success than Jay Mather in this tournament. Uh, he went out with uh, 13, uh, 13 completion out of 19 attempts for a 68.4% uh, completion. He has 249 yards total, so he's their top quarterback. He has a touchdown in this contest with no interception. So uh, let's see if that offensive passing game uh, gets going in this second half. Maybe that was the secret sauce for, uh, <laughs> for Team BC on the second down. A long pass attempted, and it is caught! What a nice reception by Terrell Jones and a great pass from the quarterback, Keyshawn Dorsey. And you see he's an experienced quarterback. See his uh, footwork on that play. He has to hit the backside post on that. Look at his feet. Look at how he turned his, his shoulder to upfield to make sure he completes that excellent pass to the middle and a good catch by uh, the young receiver. It's number two, Terrell Jones, uh, out of Lord Tweed Smear. Secondary in Langley Town. So already deep in Manitoba's territory, the ball will be placed at the 30-yard line, and the quarterback, Keyshawn Dorsey, will now go under the snapper with Noah Anderson in the backfield. The handoff to Noah Anderson will try to escape outside, but what a nice reaction here by the number 98, which is uh, supposed to be number 41, Jordan Friesen. Yes, Jordan Friesen. Sorry about that. We we missed his name earlier because we had the wrong name on the sheet, but uh, uh, Jordan Friesen has been outstanding in this contest right now, setting the edge, making sure the running back cannot uh, gain the exterior, uh, the outside, I, I mean, and making sure uh, he's uh, getting a tackle for loss on this play. A young kid from the city of Winnipeg, He's, he goes to Dakota Collegiate. So on second down and 13 to go for Team BC, let's see what they do here. They have four receivers on the strong side of the field. And they switch up to a shotgun formation here. Another toss to Noah Anderson. We'll try to find a space, but who else than Isaac Dokin, the number two, the middle linebacker with another great tackle here. No, I, I don't like that play call selection. You go twice for the run, and you've seen Keyshawn Dorsey with back-to-back -back good completions, and right now you go with back-to-back uh, -back runs that, that gets you a total of a minus one yard. Right now, I don't even know if you're in field goal position. I see Keyshawn Dorsey heading back to the huddle. It's uh, third and... 11 they might want to go for it what a good uh, what an aggressive play call yeah coach phil putt was very aggressive to start his second half they're gonna go on a third and 11 at the 31 yard line let's see what they do here but i definitely expect the pass with only six men in the box for a uh, team manitoba they bring a blitz on the outside what a nice blitz and he escapes the pressure and he's gonna run the football on a third down and he's brought down at the 20-yard line. Let's see if that was enough to get them a first down. And let's not forget about Keyshawn Dorsey's ability to move in the pocket and to ex escape the pressure. Right now, he's doing an outstanding job running the football. Uh, he only ran for two times for eight yards, but it was always effective. Even in the pocket, uh, without gaining yardage, he's able to make the first defender miss. And you see him right now. He's making a first down for his British Columbia's. Uh, offense and uh, they've been rolling since he entered the football field. Very clutch field. play and very important play for Team BC to begin the second half. Maybe that was the sparkle they were looking for. Uh, they are now in the red zone so let's see if they can capitalize here. Another toss play to the running back. This time it's the number 33 who makes some great moves and will be tackled after a gain of uh, five yards. That was number uh, 33 Andy Ofosuhin. Good job by Andy Ofoswini yeah, here, gaining the exterior, uh, reading his block and having a good gain on first down. Uh, this opens up the playbook like we said earlier. It's way better to have a second and five because you can go throw the ball short, throw the ball deep, and you can run as well. And it's still a danger. Uh, uh, you're still uh, making the, the defense struggle to, gain, uh, to, to maintain that first, uh, first down in completion. <laughs> And let's not forget that a quarterback is able to run as uh, Keyshawn Dorsey has very good legs. We saw it on the third down a few plays ago. So this will be second down and five. 
They go with the run with their fullback. That was number 44, Easton Schmolen, but nowhere to go as number five, Jen Engel, made a very good tackle here. And right now you're facing a hard decision. Do you want Keyshawn Dorsey to keep uh, playing on third down or do you use your field goal unit? Right now I, th I see the field goal unit on the field, so expect a field goal. This will make it a uh, uh, six, uh, one possession game, uh, a one point game, I mean, uh, if they are able to convert. Mm, and this will be a field goal attempt, I think, for number 52, Liam Reed. This one will be for, uh, from 21 uh, yards. Uh, and right now in this tournament, he's been 50% kicking the football. He has two uh, made, uh, field goal made and in four attempts. Let's see if he can bring that, that uh, average to 60%. Snap is good. And the kick is good. So now Manitoba 7, BC 6. The field goal attempt is good from 21, yard, 21 yards from Liam Reed. Good job by Liam Reed, making sure he gets his average over 50%, which is excellent for a kicker. Right now, it's his second field goal of the game. He's the only uh, player who has points for British Columbia. Let's see if they can diversify that offense, but it's a good sign seeing Keyshawn Dorsey throwing great balls out here. So 7-6 to six, uh, for Manitoba, who will bring back their offense on the field and still at the quarterback position, number 12, Sawyer Thiessen. Well, first and 10, passing play here. A long pass, and it is caught by who else than Reese White, who broke a tackle and is pushed out of bounds at the line of 46 inside BC's territory. Yes, and unfortunately, the DB tripped up on that play. I'm talking about Jaron Steele, the DB number 21, that makes Rice, uh, uh, Reese White escape from uh, the defender and gain an extra yardage after the catch. Good job, uh, good awareness from his part to recognize uh, the defender tripping and gaining an extra yardage on that play. So, a new set of downs for Manitoba as they march down the field. Shot confirmation. And a short pass. Oh, and it is incomplete. The intended receiver was a running back, Tanner Frobisher, as he was running a bubble play. Well, uh, a lack of execution on that play. I uh, appreciate how uh, the, 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 I'm sorry, the offensive line played that extra man rush. Uh, it was a five against five. Uh, a rushing uh, attempt and uh, they used the cut block which is a well-known technique at the offensive line uh, position uh, usually what you do is you bring your shoulder to the defender's knees cut him uh, his, his run uh, short and make him fall off uh, at the line of scrimmage six receivers for Manitoba the bootleg to the right and the pass is nearly intercepted a big lack of precision from Sire Thiessen and number 16 on the defense Caleb Howey was close from making the interception here Yes, Caleb Howie almost came up with the interception. We know he's been important in that tournament. Uh, actually, we haven't seen a, quite a lot of action from him, but right now he makes a heads-up play and almost comes down with the interception. I wonder if he tried the short or the long pass here. It wasn't very clear, but uh, 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 not a very precise pass from Sawyer Thiessen, who's having a good game, let's face it. Yes, he had a, a good performance, but right now um, I'm still uh, amazed that I've not, we've not seen more of Asian Shumatanga. Right now we see him as the up back number 21. Uh, I hope we can see more of him in the tournament because uh, he's a major factor in their offense. And Nassim, there's a player missing on the field as there is a penalty marker on the play, two of them, should I say. And the punt will bounce and will be caught at the 15-yard at the line, and the return stopped right away by Manitoba's punt unit. And that kick was almost blocked by Riley Burfello, the DB. Uh, if we remember, we can recall that first game uh, against Ontario, he was the one who blocked the kick that ultimately uh, uh, went for a Zach Smith touchdown. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the, 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 game, the, the tone setter uh, for their offense. They almost scored. They scored a second uh, touchdown, but they, they fell short. Uh, completing that comeback, uh, they lost 16 to 14 to Team Ontario. It was so close to uh, making it uh, a reality. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we know this special team unit can create block punt. Uh, we'll expect them to rush the punt uh, a lot of times in this game. And that was a dangerous play from Manitoba because they only had 11 players on the field. As we saw a guy uh, leaving the field just before the snap, that was a kind of bizarre situation. So. Uh, 
And they right catch a good now, break they're here. They're missing an all lineman. <laughs> it's <laughs> British Columbia's turn to miss a player. Uh, right now, there's a lack of focus. Maybe it's the it's the overwhelming heat uh, yeah. that's playing uh, with their brain. But right now, uh, a lack of focus from both teams. It is another beautiful day in the limestone city of Kingston. So first down and still Keyshawn Dorsey in the backfield as the quarterback. The pass is tipped and incomplete. So and a nice there, reaction Keyshawn from the number 98, Jordan Friesen. Uh, I'm so happy that we got his name right for yeah, once. Jordan, Jordan Friesen, we're so sorry. You're everywhere on that football field. And we uh, haven't uh, got your name right until this half. Good job. Good heads up play. Recognizing the bubble from number 12, the young Xavier Cole uh, out of the backfield. But, and uh, good job. And hey, once again, one of their two linebackers. Uh, I, I, we say a lot. We talk a lot about Isaac Doken, but also Jaden Engel with a good reaction on this play. He was there for the tackle if the pass was completed. So second down and ten yards to go. Fake the end off. He's gonna try to escape the pressure, and the pass is incompleted for the intended receiver. Nice pressure again by Manitoba. Yes, good pressure. This linebacker crew is quite outstanding. We're talking about Isaac Dokin, number two, uh, number five, Jaden Engel. And look at number 56 with the high pressure rush. Uh, his name is uh, Nicholas Pereira. Remember, he almost came up with, a nurse, with an interception in the beginning of this contest uh, that was ultimately overturned because of a penalty flag. Oh, no, no, this one was realized. It's number 37, the guy that got, uh, that got a bad leg injury. I'm sorry, his name is Slobosian. Uh, he was everywhere on that football field. He came up with an mm -hmm. interception and finally was uh, overturned because of a penalty flag. That was a big loss for uh, Manitoba. <laughs> and the kick is very high and a very good kick from BC. The ball is catch at the 55-yard line and the returner is going to try to get the outside. But nowhere to go. And the fumble. It is recovered by BC. Number 17 on the play. A nice the fumble. But there is a penalty marker on the field. Maybe you have to hold your horses here. Wow. Good elusiveness by number 14. But ultimately, you have to hold on to that football. You cannot make these type of mistakes. Number 17, uh, Mr. Nolan Ohm almost came down with a touchdown on that play. Good heads up play by number 22 of Manitoba's side. We're talking about Simon Cosman. The DB uh, out of, uh, I'm sorry, out of uh, River East Collegiate. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I think the penalty will be against BC because I saw a hand to the face. So, so we will see. Yeah, the penalty is face mask against BC. So they will not recover the ball. It will be Manitoba's ball in a juicy position inside BC's territory. And what I like is I'm seeing Ishan Shumatunga on the play right now. He's They're close to that uh, field goal range at least. Uh, they can get points out of this drive. They have excellent field position. They have to capitalize. It will be a very important first down to set the tone for this drive. And Ishan Sumatanga, there is a guy who is there for his team. He didn't complain about the lack of, uh, of balls he was given in the first half and still on the field for them. And he will carry the ball here and grind a few yards, let's say about five yards, but uh, this play was going nowhere, let's face it. Yes, uh, we had a clog up in the middle by this defensive front. Uh, when they saw him, they put up a seven-man pressure. Uh, they made sure he couldn't run the football. I think he's uh, game planned a lot in this tournament. That's why we haven't seen as many reps as uh, we expected from him. Uh, but right now they're playing with his uh, with the, the defensive coordinator's head. Second and five for Manitoba, and the pass from sorry Thiessen to his intended receiver. Oh, is almost catch. It was a nice try by number 11, Reese Wyke, on the reception, but the pass just lacked a little bit of accuracy here. Yes, and Reese Wyke wanted to make the highlight real play on this one, mm -hmm. and trying the one handed catch, uh, showing off his Odell Beckham esque skills uh, on this play. Unfortunately, he, he can't uh, come up with the football. Uh, he had a chance to make that catch. Maybe he could have made it with two hands if he uh, positioned his body in a uh, better. But uh, unfortunately, we will have a punt here, not even a field And goal. let me say this for the for this swag chronic of the day. <laughs> you can have two wristband, Mr. White, but make the catch if you do so. <laughs> <laughs> I like I, I like that, that aspect. of. I, but I, like we said earlier, if you think you look good, you'll play good. Look good, play good. 
So a very bad kick by Ethan Nagler here, and it touched a BC player, I think. And there is a free ball and a good reaction by the BC player here to recover the ball because Ethan Nagler was running straight to recover that ball for Team Manitoba. Yes, you have to be aware that the kicker can recover that football, take the penalty and just recover that ball. You don't want uh, him to take uh, so to you don't want your team to create such a turnover. Uh, we've seen it in the previous game; it caused the the, uh, the, the opposite team a touchdown. Mm -hmm. but you never want to see that happen. So a good reaction here, and this will force a penalty for uh, Manitoba because uh, the number eight was inside those five yards. So uh, they will get a better position on the field. And let's see what they do here. Uh, they scored points off their first possession, uh, a field goal, should I say? And uh, yeah, let's see what they do here. It's Keyshawn Dorsey in the backfield as a quarterback, and they bring a full a fullback on the field, uh, Easton Schmollen, to be exact. It is a running play with Noah Anderson. And he will gain maybe a yard or two on that play. Yeah, well, you cannot hit, pound that, that football team. Uh, they're, they're, they have such a great front seven. You cannot uh, mm -hmm. run the football on them. Uh, we saw that D-line uh, clog up the middle all throughout the game. And you have this linebacker core that can move uh, as, as fast as, as any team in this uh, competition. They have one of the best defense in the tournament. Uh, right now, they're showcasing it against British Columbia. And look who's back on the field. The safety and captain for uh, Team Manitoba, number 37, Brandon Slobosian. So good news for their team and for Slobosian, who is able to, uh, to be back on this field today. Yes, I'm so happy for him. I thought it was a bad leg injury. Finally, he comes up fine. Uh, I, I see there's a little tape on his, uh, on his knee. Maybe they patched him up real good, and it's not that bad of an injury, so he can come back on the field. And BC uh, asked for a timeout here with 141 left in this third quarter. Uh, we know they have uh, three timeouts in the second half, so not why use them now. Um, you expect a passing play here, or they're going to go back with Anderson? Well, you know, when, since Keyshawn Dorsey has been passing the football for this offense, uh, they've been progressing uh, uh, at quite an impressive ra uh, rate. Uh, quite an, an impressive speed. Uh, right now, they're using a formation that heavily designed for the run. Uh, let's see what they come up with. Yeah, it's a fullback in the backfield. Maybe you can expect them to block for uh, Dorsey. As yeah, gonna that, the pass. that's an option. Right now, they're going for a pass. Yeah, he's going to escape the pressure, but he will be tackled by my friend Jasper, or should I say Jordan <laughs> Friesen, the defensive lineman from Dakota Collegiate. Yes, this guy is having a highlight real play. Uh, I like real performance today. He's everywhere. Look at how he escaped the cut block. He overshoots the quarterback, but has the awareness to come back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, Keyshawn Dorsey tries to fire an open receiver. He takes too much time, but right now he's being pressured by number 98 and good awareness by number two to force him uh, to stay behind the line of scrimmage. And he's been causing damage. And you put a fullback in front of him. Get the hell out of here. I'm again to the quarterback once again. So this will be a punt attempt for British Columbia. It is a very good kick again. The ball will be cut at the 45 yard line and the return by who else than Reese White who will fall at the 54 yard line of his own territory. Yes, right now the game is is kind of calm. Uh, in the second half, we only have seen a, a, a field goal placement made by British Columbia. The game is still seven to six with one or five left in the third quarter. Uh, both teams still have all their timeout except uh, from British Columbia, they wasted one timeout. Uh, let's see if they can create some offense out of uh, uh, out of this uh, little drop of intensity there in this football game. And at, as a running back now, number two, Isaac Dokin. Let's see what they bring here. But Isaac Dokin, the linebacker, is set as a running back. They're going to give him the ball. So Isaac Dokin <laughs> is running and running. And he's going to gain nine yards or maybe even ten. Let's see if that's good for a first down. Wow, I'm impressed. This guy can do it all. Uh, when you have such a physical player at this age, you can put him anywhere anywhere on the football field and he'll make a difference. Maybe a little trip uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, by the turf monster here, but uh, a good, a good solid run uh, facing forward. Yeah, and that was Lucas Radborn, who was uh, eight yards down the field, the offensive lineman. Uh, nice play by him. He comes from, uh, uh, whoa, Hamar's Joel, the high school. So on the <laughs> second down and short, they hand the ball once again to Isaac Dokin, who this time will gain the first down for Manitoba. 
good job by Isaac Dokin being aware that he has to do that extra spin to make a first down. We see the replay over here. Uh, he's initially clogged up at the line of scrimmage, but right now he makes an extra spin and can gain that first yard. Good awareness. Uh, he's probably maybe a, a, a two-way player in his uh, high school. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Uh, That's what you do with athletes, say, when they're in high school. They, you make them play on the on every position on the field and you want them to add, to add their special sauce to the game. But he has quite an impressive uh, stature. He's six foot three, 220 pounds out of Steinbeck Regional uh, in Steinbeck City. Wow, uh, that's, that is quite an impressive shape uh, for a linebacker and for a running back as well. Uh, six foot three is not uh, the, the usual size of a running back. Usually yeah. it's too uh, tall for a running back, but uh, for him it's not a problem as you can see. Yeah, and he goes to the same school as Sawyer Thiessen. Uh Not very hard to see because both of them wear um, yellow mustard uh, helmets. So, uh, yeah, a yellow backfield for uh, uh, Team Manitoba, who will have a new set of downs inside BC's territory once again. And the handoff to Isaac Dokin, who's going to try to catch the outside penalty marker on the play. And a heavy run from him on the outside. He will gain five yards on the play, but let's see what the penalty marker is. And what a nasty stiff form by Isaac Dokin, taking the outside, making sure the, the, the defensive player cannot touch him. Uh, I, I'm not sure if the flag was for uh, that uh, stiff form. I know in the new uh, the new rules in the in Quebec are that you cannot stiff form anymore. I don't know if it applies to the whole uh, Team Canada. Uh, but right now, uh, the call is a holding for uh, Manitoba. So instead of a second and four, it will be a first and 20 in the middle of the field for Team Manitoba. Uh, they had some good runs, but only seven points on the board for them as time elapses uh, on this third quarter. Let's see what they do here. Uh, at the running back position now, Ishansu Matanga. It's going to be a passing play to Matanga. And he's going to escape the pressure. What a wow! He was able to stand on his feet even after uh, two two men for uh, for Team British Columbia. And there is a ninja player on the field. I think it's Riley Burfello, the DB number one. You don't want to see that happen. He's been outstanding for them. He's making plays on the special team. You cannot lose such an important player. Uh, right now they'll be evaluating him. There's the trainer uh, assisting him and uh, both team will huddle back and uh, just wait for him to uh, get better. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the third quarter and the score is Manitoba 7, BC 6. There are two other games today, one at three between Ontario and Team Alberta, uh, a battle for the third place. The bronze medal actually and after that at 6 p.m. the game we've been all waiting for, the final game of the tournament of this U18 uh, challenge for, for Football Canada Cup. Uh, it, the, the battle will be between Quebec Province mm -hmm. and uh, Saskatchewan as well. Uh, it's a, a big time play offense in, uh, in Quebec and a solid defensive group against a meticulous and a, a very well organized offense in Saskatchewan and a solid defensive front uh, that uh, they also have. Great analysis here. And in the semi final, Quebec played against Alberta. Uh, and that was one of the most spectacular games I have ever seen. A dramatic ending. El Marys and OTs. Everything was in this football game. Second down and 13. And it is intercepted Ooh. on the screen pass. So interception for Liam Reed, if I'm not mistaken. No, uh, no, no. BC. It's number 99. We keep messing his name up. It's Cody McEvoy. Oh, no, you're right. It's Liam Reed. You're right. The kicker, uh, Liam Reed, uh, who just comes up with a good heads up play. He recognizes the screen, uh, goes out on the pass, protection, and then undercut uh, Ishan Sumatanga's screen to just to get the ball under his, uh, his, his under him. But you are right, number 99, Cody McMahon, who applied a lot of pressure on uh, Sawyer Thiessen, who couldn't do anything but uh, but give the ball. And a uh, nice reaction by Liam Reed. Uh, so a screenplay is when two offensive linemen, or maybe even more, um, escape from their from their initial line, and they try to complete the short pass to the running back with the two O-linemen who are protecting him in the front. On the first down, the fake toss play and a run by Keyshawn Dorsey. Look at this. What a nice run by Keyshawn Dorsey. We're still up inside Manitoba's territory. He will finally be stopped at a 35-yard line. Well, you see this impressive kid. He's able to escape the, pro the, the pocket. He only had a tight lane to escape the defenders. 
and he found that that hole. Look at him gaining the exterior on that, letting his blocker set up the block. But unfortunately for him, uh, there was a holding penalty. We don't know at which depth of the field which will impact the positioning of the football right now. It seems like a first and ten, uh, first and twenty. So it will mm. be. Uh, uh, a holding that happened uh, behind the line of scrimmage. So instead of a, of a 20 yard gain for a uh, Team BC, it is a loss of 10 yards. That really hurts them right now. Uh, they need points on the board, so it will be first and 20 at their own 44 yard line. Yes, but right now they're showcasing some great attitude. Uh, I hope they can get a good gain on that first uh, down because uh, they've been robbed of a great run. Ball will pass to number 17 and it is dropped but the pass was backwards so he will be tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And good job by number 25 Aiden Fast. We keep saying his name, he's a silent DB but when it's time to tackle you know he's going to be here uh, with a safe tackle. The, the player juggling with the football is Nolan Ohm but the pass was a little uh, maybe behind him. Uh, it was a tough uh, throw to complete. So could you explain to our millions of spectators at home why was, uh, wasn't the, the ball called dead when the pass was incomplete at uh, first? Usually when you make a pass and it's behind uh, the quarterback's position or the possessor of the ball, it's not a lateral pass, it's a lateral pass. So the ball is live, it's like if you fumble the ball and uh, that's what happened on this play. And now we see a screenplay to Noah Anderson who's getting the exterior and almost gets free for a big game but unfortunately it will be stopped uh, at the uh, maybe 48 yard line yeah. or a third and 15. But still way short of the first down and again a good reaction by the number two uh, a pylon for their defense Isaac Dokin, a linebacker from Steinbach Regional. Yes that second level of players I'm talking about Isaac Dokin. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Jaden Engel and as well as number 56, the Nicholas Pereira. Uh, they've been outstanding. The, this mm -hmm. whole linebacker crew is, is out of this world. Uh, and I've not even started starting to talk about this defensive line and that great safety in uh, number 37, Brandon Slobosian. You know, Doken and Engel are so good uh, at what they do that they can fill the box with only six players and allow Nicholas Pereira uh, to go outside as a, as a Sam linebacker and uh, be there for the pass protection. Yes, if you can stop the run with only six defenders, uh, that makes your defense very hard to figure out. Uh, right now, this offensive line has to do an extra job uh, of blocking these second-level defenders who's, uh, who are creating uh, yeah, big headaches for uh, this down, offensive coordinator right now. So this will be a first down for Team Manitoba. A player to watch, the offensive lineman Samuel Olaniran, who's had a very good first half. Uh, he comes from Vincent Massey, Winnipeg. Uh, certainly a player to watch, playing at right tackle. So on the first down, still Sartisan as the quarterback. Will be another passing play here. And it is completed. Absolutely alone was the receiver, number 13, Caden Bannon. And if you can give me a little time to give a shout out to that uh, offensive line uh, of uh, Nova, of Manitoba, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm talking about it's number 68, Samuel O'Larian, number 54, Eric Boyd, number 72, Carter Little, uh, number 74, Lucas Radborn, and number 67, Joe Vaccaro, all starting for that Manitoba uh, crew. We know uh, all that success that Ishan Zumatunga has had, that uh, the backup Tanner Frobisher has had, uh, have all started with the first push of that offensive line. So instead of a 20-yard gain, it is a 10-yard loss because there was a penalty marker on the play against Manitoba, so it will be first down and 20. Uh, at their own 33-yard line. So unfortunately for uh, Manitoba, it's not a first down. Well, still first down. <laughs> and 20 yards to go. Trying to escape the pressure is Sawyer Thiessen. And he looks to Ishan Sumatanga, who catches the ball, but is tackled out of bounds after a gain of about four yards. But that play was going nowhere initially. Yes, uh, I think it was just improvised that dump to Ishan Sumatanga. Uh, number 68, a little confused in the backfield. Not sure which defender he's supposed to block. Uh, turns out to be a bad pass and a bad, bad, not a bad pass, but a bad play design that is easily stopped by this British Columbia defense. So this will bring second down and 15. 
and everything is still possible for both teams as the score is only 7 to 6 with 8 19 remaining in this fourth quarter of action in Richardson Stadium of Queen's University. So second down and 15 to go. Fake handoff, the play action, and the long pass is attempted, but it's going nowhere. The intended receiver here was Theo Carajalios. Yes, Theo Carajalios that thought the play was dead, but if he kept on running and stopped jogging, maybe he would have had a chance to catch that football. I don't think he knew that ball was coming for him, but uh, sorry, Tyson, on a heavy pressure by this defensive, uh, by this new uh, sorry, British Columbia defensive front, uh, forced him to throw a way overthrown pass. So we're able to make plays, but we can't capitalize. Either it's because of the penalties or interceptions and turnovers. Uh, they will need more consistency for the rest of the game if they want to score more points on the board. And now it will be a punt attempt for the shaky kicker, Ethan Nagler. And the punt is very, very good that time. It will be cut at the 25-yard line by the returner, uh, Kenneth Danbrook. Who escapes the pressure but is brought down at the 35 yard line. A nice reaction there by the number 47, Bradley Macklin. Yes, good high heads up tackle. He, he hits him with full speed. He's sure he sure get, kept his lane, uh, his, his responsibility, his lane he, that he has to take care of. Uh, make sure to cut the defense, the offensive player from be, uh, from uh, in front of him. I'm sorry, and uh, comes up with a big tackle. Yeah, so that was Caden Danbrook on the return, but a very nice punt by number nine, Ethan Nagler, uh, who comes from Kelvin School. And right now, as they start up their offense, I want to mention, we have to see Keyshawn Dorsey passing the football. That's, what have been, that's what's been effective for them, so we, we have to see more of that. Jet screen on the first down, and it is, again, Caden Danbrook with the run. Uh, he will gain uh, about five yards on the play, so it will be second down and five for uh, BC. Well, a five-yard run is what you expect from that first down, so I won't be uh, so disappointed by that play. But uh, right now, we have a wide-open playbook, so I expect uh, British Columbia's offensive coordinator to have a little fun here. And once you start running with your receivers, start to pass your running backs, you know you diversify the playbook. So, uh, so it was a good idea on the first down, but now it's second and five. With Keyshawn Dorsey on the shotgun formation. A fake jet sweep here, and... Keyshawn Dorsey will carry the ball, but nowhere to go as the pocket collapsed. And that was a disappointing player. Uh, you've seen a heavy pressure, and you try again to run the full ball on that play. I, I disagree with that. See how many uh, uh, beige defenders are in the backfield. There's at least five and two coming up uh, as support. Uh, every linebacker almost blitz. You know you could have completed a short pass for a long game, maybe after the, the reception. Uh, this is not a play that I appreciate. Do you think that was supposed to be a passing play or it looks like there was a, a, a lack of communication between the players here? I think it was uh, maybe a play action but it just didn't go well so he had to escape the pressure. Maybe it was a play action and then after that you had a pass option. Uh, I'm not sure what they tried to do here. So a pun for Team BC. And it's going to roll out of bounds. A nice pun from uh, their kicker. Is it number 10 again? Caden yeah. Danbrook or Cor Corbin Grant? No, it's Caden Danbrook uh, who's been kicking the football. I don't know what's the rotation here. They keep on switching. It's, it used to be Corbin Grant. Right now it's uh, uh, the returner, Caden uh, Danbrook. That was Caden Danbrook. <laughs> wow. But he, so, he's, he's the one supposed to be uh, the, the punter. Uh, I think... Corbin Grant was just uh, like a thing they tried out because uh, previously in the tournament uh, it was Caden Danbrook who went for 12 punts for an average of 42 yards. That's excellent. Well, wow, thank you very much, Nassim, for uh, for these informations. Uh, so it will be first down at their own line of uh, of 40. And look at this heavy formation. There are four running backs. <laughs> wow. So a running play, what a surprise by Sean Sumatanga and a gain of three on this play. And you want to know something that's funny? They played that exact same formation with a lot of success uh, when they played against uh, uh, New Brunswick. They used that heavy formation and were both to gain at least seven yards per run. And they did it throughout the whole drive and they paid off in the end. Let's see if that British Columbia uh, defense is more aware. They sure have tape on how to defend that formation. Mm -hmm. So they might be more prepared than New Brunswick who have once might, again, might have never seen that. Before. Look at this. Four point formation for uh, the two fullbacks here. 
They're going to run again on the outside with Matanga. He's dangerous there. And he's brought down after a gain of four yards. So way short of the first down here. Yes, and Ishan throw Matanga. Slow to get up. At, no, I think he will stay down. He mm. looks injured. You don't want to see that. Uh, your star player getting banged up like that. I'm sorry. We keep piping him up. But uh, in this game, he, they haven't used him as effectively as in the previous one. Um, right now, he has a bad, uh, a bad, bad rep for him that gives him a little injury. So the score is Manitoba 7, BC 6, with only five minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. So uh, they will bring their punt unit on the field. And if you're British Columbia, it is time to score a touchdown or at least points here. Yes, you know you're just a rouge away from going to overtime or just a field goal away from winning that football game. So right now you're expecting at least maybe a block or something, something exceptional from that uh, special team unit to at least give a spark to that offense. Uh, I'm sure that Keyshawn Dorsey, if you give him uh, a good setback to, to uh, have, uh, just not a good setback, but just if you give him the opportunity to just throw the football out and just give him mm -hmm. time in his pocket, he will make some magic. Just give a chance to the young men and stop running the football. You keep on shooting yourself in the foot while you run the football. You're not able to gain five yards every time you run it. So uh, you, you end up losing in the long run. And I think this punt is very important for Ethan Nagler because uh, the position on the field is everything. So you don't want to give a BC a good field position to start this drive. So let's see what he does here. He had a very, a very good punt on his last attempt. As we see Ishansu Matanga uh, getting out of the field with two big men assisting him. Uh, let's remember he's 220 pounds. Yes, and you don't want to see him uh, being carried away like that. Just cannot put any weight on his uh, right foot, uh, right leg, should I say. Uh, this is not a, a, a nice uh, sight. Uh, right now we see a lot of defender uh, ready to block that kick. Expect the block kick. On oh, and that was very close, but a nice kick by Ethan Nagler. With no home on the pressure. Nice play by number 19 on the coverage. That is Luke Cameron Brenstrom. Yes, that, that guy has been quite outstanding on the special team since the beginning of this uh, game. Uh, we've seen him uh, more in the first half, but right now he makes an excellent play for Manitoba, making sure they have a whole lot of field uh, to the uh, to defend of if they uh, to I mean to progress if they want to make a rouge or uh, maybe three points on that drive. So a nice kick for Ethan Nagler, and there is a penalty marker on the play. I think it's roughness against uh, Team Manitoba. Um, so I guess they're gonna move the ball, even though they're still discussing right now. Well, we're not sure about the penalty that's going to be, going to be called. They have a little uh, MIDI uh, review over here. Uh, we'll wait for the decision. Um, number 25 will make the call. Finally, it looks like the penalty is going to be <laughs> against BC. It's a rough thing. So it will be a big loss for them. Wow. They will go back to the 10 yard line. So Didn't we talk about... Uh, the position on the field uh, to start a drive uh, a few minutes ago? Yes, uh, that's that's just a huge setback for them. And uh, even though they might not score on that drive, uh, they have to have big gains if they want to win the field the, the uh, field position battle. So first down, and it's going to be a pass. Keishon Dorsey to the intended receiver and is nearly intercepted for number 56, Nicholas Pereira. Yes, and Nolan Holm. Couldn't came up with the reception on that play. Uh, maybe the pass was a little th uh, uh, thrown too much on the near side of the football field, but uh, a good uh, heads up play by number 56, who almost came up with the interception. Oof. So yeah, yeah, and that was nearly intercepted. Uh, bad pass from Keyshawn Dorsey. Let's see what he does on the second down and 10, a very important down for them. And look <laughs> look at the quarterback. They changed the quarterback. It's Jay wow. Mather here. Maybe they trust him more for the long pass. And he dropped the snap. What is going on? And still, oh, and there's a fumble on a QB sack, but he whistled the play down as an incomplete pass. What did you see here? Well, I think it was a... Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just confused from what I'm seeing. Uh, the ball was surely thrown uh, forward, 
uh, the ball went forward, but was it a tuck rule uh, type of thing? Let's see, he fumbles the ball first, picks it up slowly, then gets up. And no, this oh is a, this is supposed to be a fumble. He, he never threw. Uh, he never had a forward motion, so that did not count as an incomplete pass. It has to be a fumble. Right now, they rule it an incomplete pass. But uh, I think if they had the replay, uh, like we did, uh, like we do, I I, I mean, uh, they would have called it otherwise. So in this situation, I guess they're gonna give the safety. Let's see what they do here. Yes, and they will all. They will allow a safety. So two more points for Team Manitoba. The score is now Manitoba 9, BC 6. Well, that's unfortunate, uh, but it turns out fine for them because it, it, it was supposed to be a fumble. Uh, I don't know what, it, James, like this is what happened when you keep on switching quarterbacks and you don't, like you put on a cold quarterback at, at the, ha like in the plain middle of a drive. It, it was the be At the beginning, it was Keyshawn Dorsey comes up with a bad completion but he played good all throughout the game i'm not sure about this decision now you have uh jay mather that comes on the field and just fumbles the football picks it up slowly like he has all the time in the world and then just come up with what's supposed to be a fumble on the play and let's think about it i mean jay mather the quarterback was on the sideline he had to run 60 yards down to his end zone so uh maybe a little bit of fatigue he is cold, he needs to call a play, and maybe that's why he fumbled the snap at first. He was not ready to recover that ball. No, I'm not sure about this coaching decision. Well, and it's not like he's... It, 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 cost, it cost them a, a, a two points, but it should have cost them a TD and, and the whole game. And it's not like Keyshawn Dorsey is playing bad too. He's a very elusive quarterback. He's able to pass the ball. I mean, yes, it, uh, it was an incomplete pass at first, but let, get, let's give the runner a chance on the kickoff now. It's Liam Reed, recovered at the 35-yard line. And Reese White is going to escape the pressure and take on the outside. What a nice run from Reese White at the 30. And he's going to go out of bounds at the 25-yard line. What a great return from the elusive Reese White. And in this tournament, we haven't seen quite a lot of great returns. This probably is the best return of the tournament. Excellent job by Reese White finding the outside not not scared to go in uh, in where there's a lot of defender looking for his block he sees every block are set and now he can gain the exterior good job by this uh number five uh, sealing the edge again jaded angle with an excellent block on the plate so a juicy field position is it the first time i say juicy position in this game and, i don't think so and i think that will go with heavy formation i see number 98 the d lineman jordan friesen as an o-lineman I see number 54 as well. I see number five and number two also, the two linebackers. And yes, and we have a running back is number two, Isaac Dokin. And he's gonna run with the football and escaping the pressure on the 10 and the five. It is a touchdown, Manitoba. But hold your horses, there is a penalty marker on the field. I think there was a little bit of taunting from uh, Isaac Dokin here. No, I don't think it's Isaac Dokin. I think it's number 74 with a blindsider, number five. They're mm. looking at the referees, uh, lifting their hands in the air like they're innocent. But I don't know. Well, we haven't seen what happened on the backside. But good job of Isaac Dokin uh, on the counter play. They faked a, a run to their left, uh, to, the, uh, to, to the right side of the field, I mean the far side. And then they came back to the near side. And good job of Isaac Dokin gaining the exterior. Let's see if we can see the penalty flag in the backfield. No, we can't. Nice celebration. Maybe a little taunting. But uh, finally, they will bring the ball back. It's not a touchdown from what we see. And I'm sorry for what I'm going to say. It might be a little rough, but that was a stupid penalty yes, from Team Manitoba. Sure. Lack of discipline, absolutely. The running back, Isaac Doker, was all alone for the touchdown. There was no one near him, and he get caught with a penalty. Yes. But at least it's a first and 10, and they haven't lost quite a lot of uh, yardage because uh, the progression was great, and then they got a penalty. But uh, it's quite unfortunate to see that. Another uh, heavy formation for Team Manitoba. And the ball back to Dokin, who lowers the shoulder and gets tackled after a gain of only two yards. Well, right now we know Ishan Sumatanga is injured. Uh, we haven't seen quite a lot of Frobisher uh, recently, so maybe he's injured too. But we have Isaac Dokin back uh, as a running back. Uh, right now he cannot gain an, uh, a good yardage because maybe they're more aware of what they can do with uh, that man. It feels like they're going to keep the same personnel on the field. So another uh, heavy formation to expect here. 
Uh, I don't know if they, they had time enough to practice some passing plays, but it looks like it's going to be a fake run and a pass here, but the two players fell down, and the pass from Sawyer Thiessen is incomplete, but wait, wait a minute, there's a penalty marker on the field. Well, I wonder what the penalty is. Uh, I think it, it will be a holding, usually in that area when it's uh, thrown a little late, it's usually a holding. Uh, right now, number 98 seem upset, so they might have to back it up, or I think. Oh yeah, they will back it up because they're in field goal range, so they want to give them uh, more yardage to a... Uh, we're not sure about what the call What I think, field. yeah, so we're going to listen to the official, I guess. Oh, it is a face max penalty against the Manitoba, and the two receivers uh, on the on the right side of the field uh, fell down before uh, Sorry Thiessen was able to uh, execute a pass. So it was very difficult for them to uh, to complete this pass. And it looks like it was upsetting penalties on both sides of the field. So we'll just repeat second and eight. Yeah. So a good break for Team Manitoba. We'll have the chance to. Um, to take back that uh, second down, and we reach the three-minute marker uh, on the on the on the clock. So in the fourth four quarter, only three minutes remaining, or should I say, two minutes uh, fifty-four seconds in this game. And we see Frobisher heading back uh, to the sideline, and now we have number five, the other <laughs> linebacker, Mr. Jaden Angle, uh, or maybe Angel. I'm I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, who's in the backfield? Maybe we'll see a power run from him. Oh no, it's Frobisher heading back uh, to that uh, uh, the huddle. Yes, those two linebackers have been impressive for uh, for Team Manitoba so far in this game. And we see now Corey Philpott discussing with the referees, uh, maybe wanting some clarification on what happened uh, during that uh, penalty of these offsetting penalty. Maybe have some clarification. So I would say a normal formation for uh, Manitoba's offense uh, with 2.54 remaining in the fourth quarter. So now we're in the three, minutes, uh, the three last minutes of this game. So every time there is a play, the, the, the clock will be stopped until the whistle, uh, the whistle is blown. Second down and nine. A passing play from Manitoba. And the pass is incomplete. There was a tight coverage there. The intended receiver was number 13, Caden Bannon. Well, if you wonder why Jay Mather took that much time to complete the pass, is because there was so uh, such a good coverage by the DBs. Every single uh, receiver was uh, was uh, taken by a, a DB. It was quite a good coverage from that defense. They're making a standout play right here. Yeah, a nice play call by their defensive coordinator, Nathan Mollard, here. A tight coverage on these players, and they will bring the field goal unit here. So they will try to score three more points. It is Reese White as the uh, the kicker. Yes, it's an important possession because right now you force them to, to score if they want to win this game. So let's see if he can make it. And the kick and is good. The field goal attempt is good. So Manitoba 12 and BC 6 with only 2 minutes and 35 seconds remaining on the clock. Yeah, so right now you have to score if you want to win. But the, the good side of it is if you score, you're automatically almost certain to win. You, always, you only have to, do, have to do the extra point, which is quite of a given, uh, certainly at, at this age. Uh, but what's not given is the touchdown. Yeah, that's quite harder. And I want to see who they'll put up as a quarterback. Uh, I think they should go with Keyshawn Dorsey, but maybe we should see some Jay Mather uh, in the competition. Uh, at the very end of the, the, well, the very last drive that we've seen uh, has been all Keyshawn Mather, uh, not Keyshawn Mather, but Jay Mather. So there will be two other football games today at 3 p.m. It will be Team Ontario against Team Alberta for the bronze medal and the championship game at 6 o'clock, Saskatchewan against Team Quebec. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. And with 2.29, Reese White will, with another kickoff for Team Manitoba. A very nice kick was catched at the 10 yard line and the return for BC. And he's tackled by number 24. What a nice reaction from Charlie Paulet. Yeah, Charlie Paulet is, is a patient DB. Uh, we've seen him excelling in that defense. 
uh, right now he's making an excellent tackle on special team as we see uh, number two uh, with the return Carol Jones. And it seems like the quarterback will be the golden helmet. So Jay Mather back on the field. Let's see what he does here. What's the key of this drive for uh, for Team BC? Well, as every NFL quarterback will tell you, if you want to make a game-winning drive, you have to complete that first pass. This is the tone setter of this drive. If you can't make it a completion, it will be hard on the troops. The words from the wise. First down and 10. It will be a pass. And it is, oh, nearly intercepted from number five. Jaden Engel, what did he miss here? Yes, this player has been outstanding. Uh, just this coverage has been great. He unfortunately cannot come up with the interception, but he was all over him. And it, this counts as a bad pass, so it's not that much of a, a statistic disappointment. But uh, uh, I'm not appreciating that pass. It was kind of uh, thrown early, maybe too precipitated. Uh, the, a floating pass too. Yes, and number uh, third, uh, number ten, uh, Mr. Uh, Caden Dambro had no uh, chance of coming up with the football. So second down and ten yards to go. He looks to his right, and the pass is dropped by the receiver. That was number eighty, Caleb Slachter. Yes, that's a lack of concentration at this point of the game. You have to make those big time reception. Right now it's a third and ten, and I'm not sure if they want to punt it. They they will be all oh, they'll be forced to punt it. Uh, maybe expect a fake on this one. Uh, Manitoba will surely be prepared for a fake because it's a clear situation where you put up a fake. But if they have to punt it, uh, they'll, they'll have to put up a huge defensive stop and they only have two timeouts left. So the time management will be hard. So a very disappointing uh, drive for Team BC who showed no flash of offense here to incomplete a pass to the intended receiver and no chance to march down the field. So they will punt here or maybe they will try a fade, but that's very risky at this point of the game. Denbrook with a kick. Catch by Reese White at the 55 yard line. He's gonna go out of bounds on the 45, but again, a nice 10 yard return from Reese White. And I'm amazed for once, we don't have a no yard call. So uh, <laughs> good job on that special team unit, respecting the, the, the five yard. Uh, for the returner. Uh, right now, Manitoba has a great field position. Let's see if they can milk down that clock uh, and make that team British Columbia pay for that lack of productivity in offense. And that's true. I think it's one of the first games where where there's not such a lot of penalties. Both teams were able to stay disciplined. Well, and I think the I think the fact that they were able to, uh, to practice more together and to get their playbook straight and execution, I think it helps not getting penalties. Yes, but uh, I think it will be seen all throughout the day. There will be less penalties than previously in the tournament. Uh, as we've seen in the, in the first game as well, there was not many penalties. As we see a heavy formation with three receivers. Let's see what they do here. Might expect a run. And it is around your right, Nassim. And uh, Robichaud is going to gain maybe four or five yards. Uh, three should I say so it will be second down and six or seven for team Manitoba yeah so right now as as you see they'll make down the clock they just wait for the referee to blow down the whistle and they'll, they'll use every second uh, that they can uh, burn on the clock then they will probably run it again and then they can punt it to maybe get a rouge and make it a safe seven point lead uh, but we'll see what they do on the second down so two timeouts remaining for team BC let's see how they use them and again, it's the same heavy formation with the three receivers in the wide side. This time it will be a pass. Sorry, Thiessen looks to his left. Nice pressure from BC. There's a penalty marker on the play, and the pass goes out of bounds. So I think it is an holding penalty against Manitoba, yeah. but let's see. It's definitely a holding penalty. There's no uh, question on that. Uh, will they accept it or will they decline it? That's the question here. Uh, I think they will uh, decline it. They don't need that much of field, posi uh, field position. They just want the football right away. And that's a very good situation for Team BC because since the pass was incomplete, um, the the clock won't uh, start running down uh, at the whistle of the referee. So a good break for them. And it looks like Team Manitoba will have to punt here. And we've seen uh, Team British Columbia special team unit block some kick and one was returned for a TD. Uh, so expect a heavy run, uh, a heavy block formation in this one as we see a lot of people uh, around that football i don't see a player lining up wide so expect a whole 
uh, an all-on uh, block attempt. Uh, maybe sometime when you're caught up in that block attempting, you can uh, maybe um, throw a fake to just throw them off. Right now, there's a, a timeout called by uh, British Columbia. They just saw the formation that they wanted. Our defense special, our special team specialist uh, and player for uh, the yeah, the. The Queen's Gales, Gabriel Boucher, is pointing at us to say maybe it's going to be a fake punt. So let's see if they try to fake punt. But I think there was a player missing for Team Manitoba. So that would have been a very bad play, uh, bad play calling. Yes, and I'm sorry. The player missing on the field is... Uh, the time I called on the field was by Manitoba. So uh, they had a player missing. And right now we have a heavy block formation. But to counter that, we can often use a fake uh, kick. But if, they're conserv uh, if they want to play it conservative, uh, they will kick it. We'll mm. see. So let's see what happens here. But what's definitely uh, real is that we have a heavy block formation uh, from, from that punt uh, return unit. Nagler oh, that was almost blocked, but a very, very deep and great punt from Ethan Nagler. And Danbrook is going to try to escape out of the end zone. Oh, that was a very nice play, but he stumbled and uh, put his foot out of bounds, so they will take the ball back at their five-yard line. No, actually, they will start at the 20-yard line. In this tournament, uh, the rule is if you can get it out of the end zone, you'll start back at the 20-yard line. Uh, there is a penalty uh, marker on the field. He definitely touched the kicker's leg on that play. Ooh, it almost went, was blocked. Uh, it was the opposite leg, the not, not the one that was kicked. So I, and think I think that was Nolan. 15 yard penalty, I'm not sure. That was, was that Nolan Olm? Because uh, that was very close from blocking the kick, but sadly, uh, he missed it and hit the kicker's leg. So you are right. This will be a uh, roughing the kicker penalty against Team BC. And is it a 5 yard or a 15 yard gain? I see the Manitoba's offense on the field. So that will probably be a 15-yard penalty and a first down. Very unfortunate for Team BC. But again, uh, you need to risk it all to, uh, to get it all. So, uh. And the referee is discussing with the British Columbia's head coach, Corey Philpott. But it looks like they're going to bring their uh, offense off the field. And Maybe finally, and they will redo all. the punt. From what I hear, they're calling out for the punt unit. Oh. So it's a third and six. The position of the ball. Oh no, they will back it up. So finally, not sure. Not sure what the penalty was on the play. And Caden Denbrook has the green light to make a big return here. We know they will try a. Uh, to block the punt once again, but once he gets the ball, he gets the green light to do whatever he wants to gain as many yards well, as he can. I, I think if you give a second chance to British Columbia, they will block it definitely. Look at uh, the heavy formation. Maybe they can get, they can break through. Oh, it is blocked! It is blocked by Nolan Oom, and the ball will bounce at the 55-yard line. Good reaction here by the uh, the Manitoba player, but you said it, Nolan Oom with a. With a massive bomb block. <laughs> and, and he's holding on to his hand because you know when you block a kick, they, it hurts a lot. But it's quite a lot of pride uh, from that gentleman, Nolan Ulm, coming up with a big play for his team. Now they only have to, uh, uh, to great. To, they, they will start up maybe at the mid yard line. So, uh, and man, good, oh man. Position. Yes, it can hurt your hand, but it definitely hurts the other team way more. Yes. So, uh, okay. very nice play from uh, Nolan Yule. And that, that special team coordinator uh, designs his blocks uh, very well. He always has at least one or two men free on a play, and uh, he can touch the kicker after he It was the blocked front. with his foot, so a ninja <laughs> kick from Nolan Yule. On a first down, Jay Mather looks to his left, and it is intercepted by Michael Pereira. What a nice play by him, and what a bad pass from Jay Mather. And he's going to run, and going to run, and going to get out of bounds at a 26-yard line inside BC's territory. But what happened here, Nassim? And number 56 undercutting the same exact route he almost intercepted earlier in the second half. It's an all-hook formation. He splits the two receivers, and the ball is thrown with a little bit of wobble, and he's here to pick up the second interception of the game almost his third 
and we remember he al he already had a TD uh, in this uh, in the previous game. Right now, uh, he's making a case for a defensive MVP of this uh, of this Manitoba defense. But why didn't Coach Philpott bring back Keyshawn Dorsey? as the quarterback for BC. I think he realized, no, he did a mistake by bringing back Jay Mather, but it is probably too late. Uh, as uh, there's only 105 remaining is the, in this game, uh, they will bring back the heavy run formation. And Isaac Dokin, it's the same play where they scored a touchdown. And, and he's gonna run on the 10, the five, and a touchdown for and Team Manitoba, Isaac Dokin. Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. It's the exact same play where Isaac Doken ran the football and scored a touchdown, but that was called back because of a penalty. Right now, they use again the counter, uh, the counter play. <coughs> Sorry about that. Off the heavy formation. If we can have a replay on this one, you'll see he show uh, a run to the uh, far side of the football field, then comes back to the near side. Uh, once the blocks are set, we can see him motion the opposite way and then coming back and as we see he has a wide open alley good block set by this defensive unit uh, by this offensive front I mean uh, excellent job and excellent execution taking the game away from British Columbia and allow me to say this to uh, Isaac Dokken but give that man a speed check he's having a hell of a game on both sides of the field for team Manitoba this, ga this game is uh, practically over thanks to Isaac Dokken and now they will try the two-point conversion. Oh, is it a Philly special? I think it's a Philly special. To Sawyer Deason, oh, oh it is, my God. It is incomplete, but Nassim, who's a very big fan of the Philadelphia Eagles, that was a Philly special right here. Yes, yeah, so basically what they did, they made the quarterback go down the line to fool them, and they think the play is not going to be snapped, but they snap it to the running back, who does a reverse and then tried to hit the deep receiver, but does a, a bad throw. Uh, it was a bad throw made by Theo Carajalios, almost intercepted by number 13, Vincenzo Narduli. And shout out to my man Dor Narduli because there was uh, two receivers there and uh, he was able to, uh, to make the coverage for both of them and to um, to bat this pass down. But let's face it, that pick made that game, uh, well, it just ended the game. Right now it's yep. a two possession game and Manitoba has to come back with 57.3 uh, seconds left on the clock. I hope we can see Keyshawn Mather uh, Keyshawn Dorsey, I mean, <laughs> Keyshawn I, I just mixed them up. Uh, but uh, Keyshawn Dorsey back in the game. We know he's been explosive. Uh, maybe we can see at least a touchdown, but uh, it's probably too late for them to come back in this one. So Reese Dyke with the kickoff, and it is returned by BC. And the player will be tackled around the 27 yard line. I said Reese Dyke, but it's Reese White. And he's been probably one of the best players for BC today, uh, for Manitoba. Per, yes, my pardon. He's an all around player. He's been their kicker, their kick returner, uh, their punter. Uh, he's been an, an outstanding wide receiver, mm -hmm. uh, creating plays out of uh, the jet sweep. So he's running the football out of the air game. He's been receiving the football. So he's, he's probably everywhere except he's not throwing the football, but. Uh, uh, he's done it all tonight. And dress good, play good, as we say. Uh, he's got one sleeve on his right <laughs> arm and two wristbands on his left arm. I don't want to speak like anything about this because I know the the dressing code doesn't always make a good player, but he's having a hell of a game. So maybe that that got something to do with I, with. I the, told you, look good, play good. Look it's good, a, play it's good. It's a thing. It's a thing. So Jay Mather still at the quarterback position for BC. He's going to attempt a pass, which is completed to number 85, who will be tackled. A nice reaction again by number 56, Nicholas Pereira, a linebacker out of St. Paul's High School. Yeah, as that linebacker crew is, is incredible, probably the best in the tournament. Uh, I, can't, I can't even figure out how can you not win every game with that linebacker core. Uh, they've been outstanding. Uh, I'm talking about that whole box. Actually, uh, number yeah. 98 and number 99. Uh, we're talking about Jordan Freeze and Ethan Papino. They've been outstanding. I can't. I can't wait to see more of them. And Noah Anderson, who broke a tackle, Ooh. and now he's going to be brought down. But watch out for angle number five. He was dangerous on that play. And there's a penalty marker on the field. Let's and see what happens. He there. lowers the shoulder on number 10. The young Caden uh, Dambro, no, not Caden Dambro. Sorry, Nathan Smallwood who was powerless against that heavy run look at him gain the exterior stiff arming number Ooh. five the Ooh. great uh, Jaden angle and then powering his way through number 10 nathan smallwood what a 
an incredible play, but unfortunately, I think we have a holding on the penalty on the play. And hey, as a scout, you want to see those type of plays from a running back who was able to um, to be elusive here and to break not one, but two tackles on that play. Yes, we just saw two power moves, and we know he's a fast running back. That's what we've seen all tournament long. But right now, we see two power moves in the stiff arm and in the truck. Uh, a truck stick like we call it in Madden. So second down and 13 after the penalty against BC. They're gonna pass. Oh, and Ooh. what a catch from the receiver. Yeah, that was number 17, Nolan Ulm. Yo, Nolan Ulm is making a case for offensive MVP of this British Columbia formation. Right now he just blocked the kick uh, in the previous drive and now you just see him making a great reception for a first down. Good job by his part. So they are in a no huddle formation. Let's wait for the whistle here on a first down for BC. Mather bootlegs to his right and he's looks like he's gonna run with the football here. Nice block by number 10 and he's gonna get out of bounds at the 48 yard line. That was a gain of five yards here. Yes, good elusiveness. I like I don't I don't think he has the rushing abilities of Keyshawn Dorsey, but he's able to recognize that the play might be dead. He steps up in the pocket. Uh, as he's feeling the pressure and he makes a good play. Nice job by number 10, Caden uh, uh, Danbrook uh, on that block that get, makes the quarterback gain five more yards. So it will be second down and five to go for BC who have to march down the field now with only 18.4 seconds down on the clock. Four receivers on the wide side. And there is a timeout passed from BC. I think they saw something, we heard every coach screaming, even the one in the booth, the one downstairs, everyone was upset about something. Maybe they saw uh, a formation that uh, they weren't prepared for. Uh, let's see what they do on this, uh, off this timeout. So a very defensive uh, football game, but Manitoba, gotta give them credit. I think they totally deserve the win here. Yes, they've been outstanding on both sides of the field. And even uh, on the coaching side. Yeah, they had consistency. They were able to give the ball to many players. Uh, just as a running back, uh, we've seen uh, uh, Isaac Dokken, we've seen uh, Tanner Frobisher, and before his injury, the great Ishan Sumitenga. Uh, so every uh, running back had seen the field. We also saw a run by number five, J.D. Engel, as well. Well, uh, uh, they've been using all the receiver. The defensive uh, front seven has been outstanding, and their DBs uh, have been able to capitalize on many plays. So a second down and five. Mather, the pass. It is come. Oh no! It is dropped by the receiver. That was number ten again, Caden Denbrook. Well, that's a play that you will remember a lot. Uh, there's the clock is winding down, and unfortunately, maybe the game is over. But we could have at least got a first down on that play. Now we'll go. Uh, with an important third and uh, five. Yeah, and they're gonna have to keep the offense on the field because they wanna score points here. Uh, a shout out, I think, in the second half. Maybe they scored three points if I'm not doing any mistake. Yes, you're right. The game was 7-3 for Manitoba uh, at the half. Mm. So a very thin production from the offensive side for BC. Gonna be a pass. No, he's going to run with the ball. So Jay Mather, the ball carrier, and probably, no, he will be tackled by the number five with a... That wasn't the best running technique from Jay Mather, but it's the result that counts. It's a first down for BC with five seconds to go. Yes, maybe he hasn't the best running technique, but he saw that the play was dead, that every receiver was covered, and then he uh, proceeded to run uh, with the football. Right now we have a late flag as Manitoba's player were uh, talking to the referees, maybe... Uh, their mouth uh, was uh, uh, being overused in this one. I don't know, they have a, a penalty maybe for unsp unsportsmanlike conduct. It will be a 15 yard gain by uh, British Columbia. And we got a new player on the field for the, on the defensive side. It's Brandon Link Latter, uh, the defensive lineman from Interlake Thunder. He's replacing the great number 98, Jordan Friesen, uh, the lineman from Dakota Collegiate. And this might be the last play of the game. It's going to be a passing play from Jay Matter, looks to his left and it is completed to his receiver who's gonna break it. No, he's not even gonna break a tackle. He's going to be tackled after a seven yard gain. And ladies and gentlemen, this was the last play of this game. So Team Manitoba wins it all. So number five, Team Manitoba, and the loser, number six, RBC. Final score, 18-6 in the Richardson Stadium of Queen's University in Kingston. And yes, we had quite a uh, defensive showdown 
maybe the score doesn't show uh, show it uh, right away, but uh, there was turnovers, there was block kick, uh, there was uh, a, a lot of turnover, uh, a lot of great tackles and, and sack in the backfield. Uh, it wasn't an offensive showdown, but as we've said uh, a lot of times, offense uh, sells ticket, but defense wins championship. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, the best defense came out with the victory. Uh, excellent job by this young defense. I have only good words for them, uh, especially about that linebacker corps. Uh, we've talked about them all throughout the game. And right now, Matthew, I have to t I have to ask you, uh, what are your picks for uh, the defensive and, uh, and offensive MVPs of this game? Mm, that's a very good question, Nassim, as uh, both teams are going to shake hands after the speech from Team Manitoba's head coach, uh, Ryan Carruth. Man, oh man, I got to give it to... Um, Either Isaac Dokken and Jaden Engel on the defensive side, but on the offense, I would give it to Reese White. He's been elusive, their best receiver, a punt returner, even, even kicker for them. So I would give it to Reese White on offense and on defense. Uh, either Isaac Dokken or Jaden Engel, they've both been very good. And for BC, uh, on the offensive side, man, I really don't know who to give it to. Uh, maybe number uh, maybe number 10, Kaden Danbrook, with some nice returns uh, on the punts. And uh, on the defense, maybe uh, there were some good defensive linemen. I mean, uh, Cody McMahon, number 99, was very elusive. Uh, had a few tackles for loss, maybe a QB sack. So what would be my my four MVPs for the game? And what about you? All right, so if I start with the losing side, British Columbia, I have to go on the offense with Nolan Ohm, the receiver number mm. 17. Uh, he's been everywhere on the offense. He's been able to run the football as well. And he made the block kick that would almost put in his team in, in, uh, in, enough, in a good position to make a, 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 maybe a touchdown, the touchdown that they needed. But unfortunately, they threw an interception after that. Uh, on the defensive side, uh, I would go with, oof, what a tough choice. Um, uh, you, you choose that uh, a defensive lineman. I'd have to go maybe with uh, Liam Reed, uh, the, the D-line number 52, who also had the, the six uh, lone point of this offense. He had the two field goal made. So maybe I'd have to go with him. If I go and I look back at Manitoba's uh, uh, offensive uh, team, I'll go with uh, Reese White, the wide receiver who's been the kicker, the punt returner, the kick returner, the field goal uh, 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 kicker, everything. Uh, he's done everything in this football game. And if I have to choose a player from the defense, uh, you know, I can't even choose a single player. But uh, on the D-line, I go with number 98, Wow, uh, the young Jordan Friesen. That's what I was going to say. Jordan Friesen, a.k.a. Jasper the Ghost, because uh, he was... <laughs> Uh, on our roster, he was number 41, so uh, he's a number 98 now. But I think it is a very good decision. Of course, their three linebackers have been very good throughout the tournament. But number 98 on the defensive line, Jordan Friesen, absolutely deserves uh, defensive MVP but, for Manitoba. But honestly, their defense is so impressive. I could have given it to uh, like uh, three, three to five, uh, well, at least five players, and it would all have been great picks. As we listen to our uh, favorite public announcer, uh, Gabriel Boucher, who's uh, an outside linebacker for University of Queens, a uh, very good friend of us. Uh, he's been and playing his uh, high school at Jard. And I was right, Nolan on the wide receiver, standing at six foot two, 195 pounds out of Kelowna Secondary. Uh, he's been amazing all throughout this game. Uh, he's been the one that blocked the kick at the very end of the game, gave a chance to his offense to make uh, uh, maybe a comeback in this one. But unfortunately, it was picked off. Uh, maybe a lot of, of, uh, co of great coaching with that on and off switch of quarterbacks. Well, we'll see. So another good decision, Corbin Grant uh, for, uh, for BC. Uh, very good, the safety. Uh, we saw a little matchup between him and Reese White throughout the game, the two number 11s. And I, as I recall, Corbin Grant came up with the first interception uh, of British Columbia's team uh, off the bat of pass uh, by the wide receiver. He just came out with a big interception. Uh, he's been solid tackling uh, defensive, uh, offensive players. Let's see what Manitoba's player gained the defensive and MVP of. Defensive and offensive MVP. Yeah, and both of us are right. That was Reese White. Uh, kicker, kick returner, wide receiver. Uh, 
He's been a very good player for Team Manitoba. And he's all smile. Look at this smile from <laughs> Reese Swag. Certainly a picture to put on Tinder. <laughs> uh, you're a funny dude. But, hey, uh, excellent job. I like the way he returned the football as well. He probably had the best return in the whole tournament. For Team Manitoba with an outstanding performance of three sacks today. Number 98, Jordan Freeze. And you were right, Jordan Friesen once again. Uh, I think you're three out of four in this one, and sadly, I, I have one out of four, <laughs> so you won this one, that's him. But uh, don't seek for revenge too far, because there are two other games today, so Ontario will face Team Alberta for the third place in a few minutes, and at 6 p.m., it will be Saskatchewan against Team Quebec. For the big, finally... Uh, mm -hmm. you, if you want to stay tuned, hey, hey, we'll be up Canada with a live broadcast in 30 minutes uh, for Where this Alberta against Canada Ontario Canada team. Uh, I will be Ontario calling the game Canada with my fellow Alberta friend, Ger uh, Urban, uh, Urban uh, sorry, Jonathan Urbanovich. We want to thank the whole camera crew for that uh, amazing job they did as we uh, see a few highlights uh, real from this game. Uh, I can see Keyshawn Dorsey off. Uh, the 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 sink the under center uh, snap he comes up with a big throw to number two Terrell Jones the wide receiver here's uh, Sawyer Thiessen, uh completing a pass to number one Mr Theo Carajalios for the first touchdown of that game mm -hmm. and we can see that little celebration you know uh, he's the trainer making the, his his uh, his kids do burpees I like that I like that team celebrating is always nice I see uh, Jay Mather throwing the deep ball. Uh, to our fellow number 17, Nolan Ohm, the offensive MVP of this competition. We see Liam Reed making a field goal here. He has the only two, uh, two field goals of his team, the only points that uh, British Columbia were able to put on the board here. Again, Sawyer Thiessen uh, with the short pass to Reese Wyke, who's able to gain the outside and uh, uh, create more uh, yards after contact. Excellent job from him. He's the offensive MB MVP for uh, Manitoba. Right now, we see Sawyer Thiessen being sacked by number 99 uh, of British Columbia, Cody McMahon, uh, who's been quite great uh, on, for this defensive front. Right now, a deep ball by Jay Mather, intercepted by number 56, uh, Nicholas Pereira, who could have also been a defensive MVP, mm -hmm. but he has been real great. And now we see the sack from the, the defensive MVP, number 98, um, it was uh, Jordan Friesen, sorry, I keep missing uh, him because he was number 41 on our depth chart. Jay Mather with the screen who was intercepted mm -hmm. uh, by who else? Then number, uh, I can't tell you, 52, <laughs> I think, uh, Liam Reed. And that was then, another big play. And then Jay Mather fumbled the, the, the snap. And then uh, we see our friend uh, uh, <laughs> Jordan Friesen, <laughs> defensive MVP. Jasper! And now the best return out of, uh, out of this tournament, Reese White. Uh, taking the ball out to the 25-yard line of the opposite, opposite team, uh, celebrating with his friend uh, on the sideline. Right now, we see him making another extra point. Good job. So as we see the highlights of this game, I want to thank the whole crew uh, who are uh, behind the mics. So uh, thanks, thanks to all. Thank you for both teams for a great show today. The final mark, 18-6. to 6. And from Nassim and I, we thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen at home. And stay tuned, because in just 30 minutes, Team Ontario will face Team Alberta for the bronze medal.